Throughout history, free thinkers have outraged the religious with their wacky ideas about the virtues of free speech, reason, and of course, eating babies. Now, God is dying, and it's time to dispose of his remains. From the pits of hell, Satan sends two puppets of the imperialist West and the Zionist Jews against God, Islam, and tiny kittens to bring you their propaganda and conspire for a new world order. This is Secular Jihadist for a Muslim Enlightenment with Ali Rizwi and Armin Navabi. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another special, very special Ask Us Anything episode of Secular Jihadists for a Muslim Enlightenment. My name is Ali Rizvi, and with me is Armin Navabi. Armin, how's it going? How's your evening? Not bad. Today? Not bad. Bang. Okay, that's small talk. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, there's a couple of, before we start uh, the questions and taking questions from you guys, there's a couple of announcements. First of all, our website is live, secularjihadist.com. So do go and check it out. Uh, if you're hearing us for the first time, or you know, even if you're somewhat familiar with us, um, you know, we have. Uh, you can go to the website secularjihadist.com, and that way, you can also go to our Patreon, which is uh, patreon.com/sjme. And if you sign up as a patron, you can see video conversations of all of our episodes. And some of our our episodes they include um, interviews with people like Majid Nawaz, with Sarah Haider, with Steven Pinker recently, Matt Dillahunty, um, just a, a, and a lot of wonderful ex-Muslims who are around the world uh, that we speak to very, very often. So uh, do check that out. Again, secularjihadist.com. A second announcement is uh, many of you uh, who are patrons uh, must have seen uh, Armin's interview with uh, our patron and our really good friend, Obed Omer. Um, And it was on the I did a second one as well, but that one was private. That one's private. So it was, it was about the, uh, that one was about the Catholic Church. So with our patrons, we are uh, getting started, starting to get a roll on uh, the, the private chats, the one on ones. Um, and you w- I think, yeah, Armin, they do have the option of making it public if they want, right? There's details well, depend- on that. There's different tiers of our patrons. So because um, the, the public ones are helps us because we can put more content out there. So the private ones are for our, uh, because then if we spend a lot of time doing a private one, it's going to, we, we can't even share it. So we put that for a little bit higher tier patrons. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you have the choice of uh, a, a private one-on-one chat and depending on the tier that you're in, uh, we can make it public or or not either way so um armin has started doing them we're kind of uh, doing them both separately you get to do them separately with armin and myself so uh feel free to uh, reach out to me i'll actually be reaching out to people who who armin has already talked to and then i'll be scheduling um my own one-on-ones with them so mm-hmm. we'll get a chance to do that and that should be a lot of fun and uh, yeah obey this is awesome we we had uh you know, he's, he's a fantastic guy. He's one of my favorites. So, right. you so, know, we've, uh, right. and to see, a pretty good episode. And to see how to, um, um, how to reach out to us and schedule these events, um, either ask us on Patreon or I might already message everybody about it. But if you ask us on Patreon, then I'll, res- I'll send you the post regarding to instructions on how to schedule meetings with me, Ali, or both of us. All right. Right. Okay. So, uh, cool. Another announcement like this week, uh, we're going to have the uh, latest episode of uh, uh, the Secular Jihadist podcast is going to be with Abdullah Gandal. Uh, we recorded that. It was a fantastic episode. It was on Quranic criticism uh, about uh, talking about debunking and fallibility, shattering taboos. Uh, about criticizing the Quran. So this was uh, obviously a, a very key element of the the European Enlightenment was biblical criticism, the academic discipline of it. So Abdullah Gandal, who is a, pretty much like a rising star uh, in the atheist movement in general, uh, much less the ex-Muslim movement. I mean, he, he was. Uh, we just had a fantastic conversation with him, and uh, we will have have him back for part two of that conversation, where where we're going, going to be talking about. Um, with the life of Muhammad, so d- d- definitely don't miss that one. Anyway, you can check that out. I have a and Facebook question. I have a face. I, yeah. th- um, I have the go Facebook. So we're going to start with the questions now. Yeah, yeah, go yeah ahead. but I have some from Mustafa uh, Iqbal on Facebook. He says, "I understand that you guys want to engage with Muslims more. So for that matter, how have you approached Yakin Institute for Islamic Research 
for a panel discussion or even a debate? Isn't isn't that the institution where no is where we had Asadullah? No, that's a different institution. Yeah, I think no, I think Yakin was uh, Asadullah. We had some. We had Asadullah from Yakin Institution on one of our episodes, Mustafa. Uh, but if you know, but if you know more people that more Muslims, we are very interested to have more Muslims on the podcast. Um, mm. So if you want to recommend anybody to us, other, um, or if you want to reach out to Muslims coming to tell us, by the way, did you mention our website? You mentioned our website. Right? I did. Yeah. About All two right. or three times. Secular That makes another one. But yeah. yes. Uh, from, yeah, Yakin Institute is where Asadullah Ali Al Andalusi is. He's a previous guest on the podcast. So mm. if you did miss that episode, be sure to go back in the archive and check it out. They're just all search, on iTunes for free. Yeah, just so, search for secular jihadist Asadullah, and then you you should be able and, to find and you'll it. be able to find yeah. it. And and just generally, one of the things I have actually reached out to some imams. Uh, I never hear back uh, mm. for some reason. It seems that a lot of the uh, imams are the prominent people who we do tr- want to have a dialogue with, and we'd love to have a, di- li- a, a live dialogue with. Uh, for some reason, they're, uh, t- many of them are, are content sort of uh, arguing online uh, back and forth, but they don't really want to engage in a live dialogue or, or for whatever reason. Um, you know, uh, maybe they don't want to be associated with uh, ex Muslims, or maybe they don't feel like they have the debating chops to actually have a live debate. I don't know. I don't know what the reasons you are. You should I'm use sure the right terminology. Like, would them. you like to come do some da'wah to atheists? Say that. <laughs> no, <I think laughs> Try to convert us. Yeah. Yeah, no, because basically, if you say that, then if they say no, it seems like they are uh, giving up the, on their Islamic duty because we're giving them an avenue to do to preach Islam to people that have abandoned Islam. And if you say no to that, you're missing a huge opportunity on Davo. We're giving you a huge audience of uh, coffers and, Mm -hmm. you know, you're saying no to it. Yeah. Uh, So, but if you guys do have any um, suggestions for imams and everything that that you'd like to come on who are interested in uh, debates uh, like this or discussions, I mean, really, I, I prefer discussions to debates because you're not trying to win. You're trying to actually exchange ideas. Uh, So in the past, we've had Daniel Hakikachu. Um, we've had Asadullah, you know, we've had other liberal Muslims like Majid Nawaz, uh, you know, in previous episodes as well. So, so please send any recommendations our way. Uh, yeah. Beej is asking, have you had Abdullah Samir on? I've talked to Abdullah, um, and, uh, at, at some point, yes, Abdullah Samir will be coming on, uh, as well. So just letting you guys know, uh, uh, heads up there. By the way, Ali is in charge of the guest, getting us the guest. Which is uh, so he's the one to go to with regards to have this person on or have that person on. Oh, by the way, there was this Malaysian Muslim that has been recommended to me to have on our show. Maybe I'll, I'll, but she's like defending a Malaysian Muslim woman that is defending non Muslims from other Muslims. So that's pretty mm. interesting. We should like, we should have her. Oh, I would love to have that conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I do that. And if you have anything, I mean, just message me on, if you go on my Twitter, uh, in my Twitter bio, my, my email's there. So just email me at, right at my Twitter bio. Um, or you can also email me from atheistmuslim.com, whatever. I'm pretty easy to, to reach. Right. So um, a couple of, okay, now we're going to get into the questions. First of all, to get this out of the way, Brian Harrison, I want to acknowledge, yes, your brother, Takashi69, uh, he has a song called Gummo, which is what made him famous, uh, apparently, as you, as you claim. So please feel free to go and check that out. We're not going to play it on here. Um, <laughs> well, you're going to get a copyright strike <laughs> if you play it on here. Yeah, exactly. So we don't want to get the shutdown. But please, yeah, to, to tell them we said hi. <laughs> uh, anyways, now that that's out of the way. Yeah. Um, okay. So first of all, starting with Jim. Jim is saying, "No, this is, we always start light. I like this. So are two heads really better than one? Would you prefer to live on a planet where women have two heads and one body or one where women have one head and two well-proportioned bodies? Armin, I'll leave this to you. What the hell? I don't know why it's specifically <laughs> about women. Um, You're assuming heteronormativity. Right. I mean, the both uh, of them are fucking free. Listen, well, if you if you're if you're having to think about it that much, let's just skip this question. Go yeah, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I, I rather I rather not live on any. Well, I mean, that's not the question. I guess two heads and one body is less freaky. Both of them are freaky, but two heads. Two and heads one, and 
two heads and okay. one body is less freaky than one body and two one head and two uh two bodies, isn't it? Is that so how we would even walk around like that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, for the sake of the individual, for mobility's sake, I would say one body and two mm-hmm. heads. Anyways. Anyway, guys, thank you for your questions. Good night. That's the show. <laughs> and we're going to see you next time. No, no. That's it. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, yeah, and Jim is following up and saying, has all this evolution been worth it? I don't know. We're going to find out at some point. Okay. Wait, actually, that's, uh, a, good, that's a good question because I think I had a... Um, so, here's the thing. We, we, had, we, we both agree with Steven Pinker that things are always getting better and better, right? Like, when it, when it comes to worth it, are you talking about from, from obviously, from a human No, no, he, he's talking about the two heads, one body thing. Is oh, that okay. Yeah, I yeah, thought that was a guy. different question. Never mind. <laughs> I was, like, was going to answer a serious <laughs> question now. But no, never mind. Um, um, Sang is saying, have you guys read the AFID piece on Imam Tawhidi? I have not. Um, Wait, what's the question? I don't know what. Have you read the AFID piece on Imam Tawhidi? What the hell? Is uh, it? Yeah, I have not. But Imam Tawhidi, by the way, was a previous guest on the podcast uh, almost a year ago, I think. Yeah, that's our most watched video on YouTube, by the way. Right. So, no, I haven't seen that uh, piece on him. Um, uh, what's what's sorry? What was the name? I lost the question. Uh, yeah, Sang. I'm sorry, I haven't really seen it. I I did see a tweet from him recently that relates to my city where he really wants us to vote in faith goldie faith faith goldie as our uh mayor um who doesn't really have much of a chance i don't think he knows toronto very well i don't think that's going to happen um i don't know that much about faith goldie either except i have heard her uh, talk about identitarianism and the identitarian movement so yeah i, I don't know I'm, I'm just a little wary of identity politics in general especially when it comes to this context um I, the title of my book was tongue-in-cheek it was actually uh, poking at some of those identities anyway uh, nick kana how do you distinguish between sam harris and robert spencer's attitudes towards islam and muslims wait what's robert spencer's attitude towards islam though um Wait, Robert which, Spencer. Oh, okay. You were talking Robert Spencer. I always confuse the two Spencers with each other. <laughs> I'm um, sure he's gonna love that. <laughs> <laughs> um I, I think that yeah. I think I think Sam Harris is much more reasoned. Uh, I think that he's got uh, his head in the right place. He's obviously uh, he, he's also like I personally align with him as well because he's got uh, more uh, liberal values. He aligns on a lot more things. He's concerned about more but, topics than just But Islam. Robert Spencer knows more about Islam than, than Sam. Robin, Robert Spencer does, but uh, unlike uh, some of the other sort of, like for example, Tom Holland, right? Tom Holland is a, a brilliant sort of, he's, uh, he's written about Islam and Muslims. He, he's not a formal scholar, but he might as well be. And uh, he's researched it really well. Other people like Patricia Crone, um, you know, she's a very well-renowned scholar. Uh, Michael, uh, is it Michael Cook? Yeah, but, I think but, is another. But, no, but scholar. Com- I mean, Robert. I mean, I read some of Robert Spencer's it, books. He's, yeah. pre- he's he's pretty good on Islam. Whatever your views yeah, are on I, him personally, he's his his knowledge on Islam is pretty good. I I would think that Robert Spencer is uh, his criticisms of Islam. I actually agree with most of them, and I think Armin does too. Right. Um. Uh, my only problem is I feel like he is uh, he's very very alarmist. Uh, there's a lot of uh, he, he has a lot fear mongering uh, kind of stuff, right? Fear mongering, a lot of xenophobia, creeping Sharia. He had a book called Stealth Jihad where he was talking about how but, but uh, just, there's just a stealthy clear- sort of jihad creeping in. He thinks Majid Nawaz, people like Majid Nawaz, are, are potentially have Islamist and jihadist sympathies, and you know right. that's what they're working in in secret. So uh, that's a little. Uh, th- there's a little bit of paranoia there. So it's it's kind of like the Garrett Wilder thing, just, where I agree with the criticisms of Islam. I just don't agree agree with the diagnosis. But I think when it comes to the treatment right. and the management, I think they're completely wrong. See, I mean, yeah. and, and then people say, "Well, do you think there's no danger with Islam?" And of course, of course, there is. I, I just think that I just think, for example, the, the people that are like, "Oh, this person is." is the jihadist or this person is a secret jihadist or tariya. I think it's the difference between pointing out that, okay, the dad in the family, he's spending the money on alcohol instead of paying for our education, or he's like, he's not treating our mom properly and po- uh, pointing these things out. And then 
compared to uh, somebody saying, no, he's actually a mass murderer and he actually is about to kill the children, right? You know what I mean? Like, did, did we, uh-huh. you know, we can, p- I mean, I think when it comes to Islam, there are a lot of damages to society and a lot of threat to civilization when it comes to Islam. But I think that um, us pointing out that some of these um, some of these threats that other people point out are not true or fear mongering, it doesn't mean that there is no threat from Islam. I just think exactly. that I just think that they are pointing in the wrong direction when it comes to the what what threat Islam actually has to uh, to us and to civilization and to, yeah yeah. But go ahead. It's, it's, I, know, I also think it's uh, counterproductive. And here's an example. I think we were talking about this recently, and this is sort of, you know, uh, sort of treacherous political territory. But you know, when, we, if you have something like climate change, right? So one of the things is I remember in the 80s we were talking about chlorofluorocarbons and how we shouldn't use spray deodorants and things like that. And and many of us stopped using it. And that had a huge effect. But uh, then when they became very very politicized and st- people started talking about, well, in 10 years, 10 years from now, there's gonna be no New York, or in you know. 15 years from now right. this is not going to happen so when you when you create an alarmist kind of atmosphere around something that is actually originally reasonable at its core right. then people stop taking it seriously actually that's, that's a very good exa- that's a very good analogy um, mm-hmm. yeah because nobody's and by saying the way, I'm global- not, I, climate change is real exactly. and it's anthropogenic but yeah, no, exactly because that's like if I say like no New York is not going to be underwater in 10 years that doesn't mean that I don't see global warming as a threat Right as a, as yeah, but that's that's a fantastic analogy. I'm gonna I'm yeah, gonna so, I'm gonna use that. So this is this is one of the problems when you kind of focus in on one thing and you become a one issue person and that's all you think about. Mm-hmm. If you take any one issue, if you start looking at misogyny, for instance, you can watch every television show and you're gonna find misogyny everywhere. If you're looking for to find it everywhere the same thing goes with homophobia same thing goes with any you will if you focus if you become a one issue person you'll do it but the the thing that i want to stress is that the reason that we left islam is because we value reason we value balance we value truth logic and um and and part of that involves not being alarmist going going by the evidence and and reacting to things and not reacting but responding to things in in, in a way that's proportional to the evidence and the threat that we're seeing. So, and and there are many threats. It's not just one thing. I mean, people say, "Oh, no, white supremacist is a threat." No, Islam is a threat. You know, well, Islam is a bigger threat than white supremacy. Yes, that's true, and it's also true that the other thing is a threat too. So, yeah, do the, does the regressive left uh, do do, uh, do they empower Islamists? Yes, they do. Armin's talked about it. I've written a whole chapter in my book about it. But is it also true that a lot of these sort of far right figures by going overboard in their uh, alarmism are now empowering the regressive left. Well, Qasem Rashid was kind of a nobody before this stuff happened. Now he's like a huge guy, right? He's a very, very, he's, he's got a lot of influence because a lot of the regressive leftist people have been uh, very empowered, you know, in the public discourse because of this. So, so it, it, all of these things are true and it's, you don't have to choose one or the other. And, and that's the danger of alarmism whenever you do it in either case. So it's, it's good to be, reasoned and it's good to be balanced and and to stay in proportion and and have an interest in multiple things don't just be a one-trick pony nothing exists in a vacuum everything exists in 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 co- it's in coexistence with a whole bunch of other factors that all sort of interplay in terms of causality yeah okay let's go anyway. to this one. Yeah. okay so i i'm gonna have to say this name um I, so usually what we do is just say the first name, but in this case, I have to say the full name because the full name is Kant Spell. If I said the first name, it would just be Kant. So sorry about that. <laughs> the question is, you guys have these usernames. It's hilarious. Now more of them are going to do this, I know. Uh, did you believe the Arab Spring was a positive thing at first for atheists? Wait, did we miss some stuff about my, um, up there? With from Casey Atheist tagging us, or have you not got there yet? No, I haven't gotten to that yet. Okay, let's let's go through them a little bit faster because we're gonna. Yeah. Okay. 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 Cool. So, do you did you believe the Arab Spring was a positive thing at first for atheists? Um, the, what country though? Uh, just the overall, the, the the whole thing was that there are all these Middle Eastern dictators, Arab dictators, and there were being there there were uprisings against them, and uh, there's every reason to think that these uprisings were pro democratic. So anytime right. you have something, yeah, go ahead. We, I mean, right, actually, the thing is that we don't have like a, um, we can't we don't have like a sample control environment like 
you know, add Arab Spring, not add Arab Spring. But that's a good point. I mean, if the Muslim Brotherhood, I mean, atheism is now illegal in Egypt under fucking Sisi, right? Mm -hmm. So, but it would have been worse under Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, it it would have definitely been worse under Muslim Brotherhood. Um, Mm -hmm. I guess Tunisia is much better now, right? Yeah. Um, Syria is has been worse. uh, The Arab Spring for Syria has been worse for everybody in fucking Syria, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Where else? Libya. Libya again has been worse for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Go on. Yeah, I I have a a sort of a long term outlook on this. So I'll try to summarize it as quickly as I can. Uh, around 70% of the population in all of these countries across the board, Libya, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iran, even 70% of the population is under 30. So whenever the last great, for example, Gaddafi was dictator for 40 years, 40 years, these people didn't know anything. So what happens usually is that when you break up a system and and the people, the majority of them don't really know any other system, it takes some time for it to get but to become okay, you and underestimate ha- how religious can young people become. No, no, I uh, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually getting to that. Okay. So what I'm saying is that when you have these dictatorships, a lot of these were secular dictatorships. So Gaddafi and I lived in Libya. He's pro. Um, he was pro socialism. You know, he was, he was secular. Saddam was very secular. I mean, even though he pretended not to be whenever he needed not to be. Um, so. Uh, what happens is that the only organized opposition these people generate, these dictators, are the Islamist groups. Right. So the Muslim Brotherhood became very, very strong in uh, Egypt over the years in opposition to Mubarak. So when Mubarak came down, that was the one the most organized opposition party that came through. Doesn't mean that there weren't other groups. They just weren't as organized. or more This fragmented. is exactly what happened in Iran when the Shah. I was just going to say. Right. Exactly. So the, the Iranian revolution was, there were feminist groups, there were socialist groups, there were many secular groups. Communist but the thing groups. is... So the, the strongest, yeah. the, uh, after the um, Islam, Islamic groups, the main, the strongest group, other group was Islamic groups. Mm-hmm. Sorry, it was the communist groups. Go yeah. Ahead. So, so I think that what we're going to see is we're going to see a lot of these Arab Spring countries. It's going to be a process that's going to be a little bit longer. Uh, it'll probably go through what the Iran went through, where you had this, you know, had, now you have a clerical leadership for a very long time. And eventually when that cracks, you're going to have a much better situation <laughs> in Iran if it does. No, yeah, if it cracks, it might never crack. They're yeah. all very old. There's already a lot of rivalry within the hardliners. There's a lot going on. Come I mean, on. There's... Okay. So actually, we don't. We, it's been for, 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 for the past 40 years in Iran, everybody has been any day now, any day now. Okay. This is. Oh, <laughs> okay. hey. We've been used to hearing, like, okay, it can't last that, any longer. That's what that we do. doesn't used to. mean. It's not, I'm, I'm just I'm saying. Not saying things... I'm not saying it's, it, it means that this time is not different. This time might be different, but we, I, we learned to become very skeptical. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because think oh, about, I I get that. I first totally of all, get that. First of all, I don't all, think it was. It does I don't think decades. it's. You know, my dad. Okay, so it's a lot of people say it might it, the Islamic Revolution might be worth it because people now in Iran see how shitty things are when Islam is in power, right? But I'm like, no, it's just forty years. Are you serious? It's not worth it. You know how many people have suffered because of this. Right, uh, the, the net benefit is negative. It's definitely negative, and also, but but here's another thing. Like, think about people think like the Iran, and and I know a, lot, a lot of Iranians hate it when I say this because a lot of Iranians want this government to fall. And I'm not saying it's not going to fall. I'm just saying, even Assad didn't fall. Okay, Assad didn't fall. Assad has like a fraction of the force and the power that the Iran government has, right? But Iran it, also supports Assad, right? Right, but Iran Iran so has, does Russia. Like they, well, have, Iran, they have a lot of support. Yeah, yeah but they but but Iran Iran yeah, so Iran used a, lo- a, a, a tiny fraction of the force that it could to support Assad and if it wanted to support itself, it would use all its force mm-hmm. to support itself, right? Yeah. Um and the, th- the thing is Iran is not just in Iran. Iran has tentacles all over the Middle East. It could make it could make the uh, life miserable for uh, all the forces there, every, all, okay. every single power there. I'm just saying that everybody thought Assad is gonna is gone, is gonna be, uh-huh. you know, and he he's still there, 
right? I'm just saying it's not that easy. I mean, look at United States. Oh, no, which is I, most I don't think it's easy, but I, yes. do, I do think what I'm saying is in the, in the, just if you look at the history of countries, usually whenever you have, you look at the history over a hundred years of something, right. there's always like, well, this event happened. And then you had this uprising, it was quashed. Then this uprising was even more intense. It was quashed. And then eventually this is how it ended up. Um, so I'm, things I'm not can saying get it's worse gonna happen. instead of better. You don't know. Like, it's not that easy to, it's, there's not, it's, I don't think, I think you have so many examples of things going different ways that there is, it's not a trend. You know, there's I mean? no perfect analogy. Yeah. I mean, there is like unique well. situations, you know, I yeah. mean, I, a, anything that happens, you could point to something in history that is, that was similar to what happened. So you have examples for things going in e any direction, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it's, yeah. if it's easy to, um, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, go ahead. No, I, I think overall, I mean, I guess the, the question was, uh, was it a good thing for atheists? I think that if you have a any kind of democratic uprising and any kind of uprising where there are people who, are, who have less power, who are able to speak up against people with more power, that kind of free speech, even though it's a limited sort of retarded, right. retarded, I mean that in the literal sense of the word retarded, like slowed um, effect, uh, it, it, it's... Encouraging, it's a baby step. I tend to be uh, right. optimistic with the baby steps, but I understand why people are skeptical about right, it. Right, the, the voices of this. But here's some. Here's what happens. Sometimes the dissent is met with such an uh, such. Okay, here's actually. I could give it a reason why it actually could work the other way around, because oh. the example of Syria is the and Libya are the main reasons why people the people in Iran that are against dissent, they point uh -huh. to Syria and Libya. So you see yeah. how dissent, how an example of what happened to people that went against the government is now a discouragement for other people going against the government. This is so in Iran, there is competing narratives that we need to f fight against our government. We need to, we should even among people that are against the, is, the Islamic regime in Iran, um, among many of them think like it's better than what happened to Syria. Whatever these, whatever, whatever these imams do to us, let them stay in power because look at what happened to Libya. Look at what happened to Syria. Look at what happened to Iraq. We prefer dictators over chaos. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you say like, as long as you have more dissent, it might be good because now more people have more voices. No, because in this example, people, the reaction to that dissent might actually discourage um, it might be uh, used as a as a PR against any form of dissent, but yeah. but we don't know. We'll see. Uh, so but, the, the, but the idea it, is one thing true. we could both agree on is hold. Don't hold your breath. And but but what is true that and something something you often point at is the demographics are changing. A lot of people are anti religion in Iran. A lot of internet. People, yeah, a lot of people are anti government in Iran. But there are new trends that are happening in Iran, which is there are people in Iran that growing, there's a growing movement in Iran, anti-religious, anti-Islam, nationalist, pro-government movements in Iran, which is so bizarre, right? So you have people that hate Islam with passion, but support this government. Go figure mm -hmm. that. Like we could get into the details of that, but this is a new, young, very young generation movement that is growing in Iran. Yeah, which is bizarre. Yeah, I, th I think we should we we should have another episode. I know I know we've talked about it a lot, but people yeah. generally really they like the perspective because that I think that uh, what's happening in Iran and the way things turn out in Iran is probably to me it's a that there's no perfect analogy. But it's sort of uh, it, it's an indicator of the general temperature of a lot of that region and people who've been through that kind of history in terms of the kind of rule. Yeah. Uh, there obviously there's many things that are not parallel at all. But yeah, um, I would be kind of interested to see how that turns out. Okay, anyway. sorry, let's go next. Slide. So let's move on. Wonder if we can get Sarah Sen to come on. Who's Sarah Sen? Do you know no. Sarah Sen? I don't know either. Sorry, uh, Beach. If you could uh, clarify that, you know, we'll go. Oh, Saracen is an ex Salafi now Hanafi. Oh, oh, that rhymes. That's pretty cool. You should be a rapper. <laughs> oh yeah, um, that, that, I would love that actually. Now, now that you said it, please let yeah let me send me the contact information. Beach again, oh. just go to my Twitter bio. My email's there. Send it to me, and uh, that actually sounds interesting. So I'd be happy to um, reach out to Saracen, he or she, whoever it is. We should um, have Ali Ali Dawa. Ali Dawa. Oh, that's a 
pretty badass name. Yeah, we should totally do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Ali Dawa. Um, Bruno is saying, Ayman Ismail, he's really nice. I agree. I actually really like Ayman. I don't agree with him on everything, obviously, but I, I think he's one of those rare oh, people. Ayman? I meant yeah, to- and Ar- Ar- Armin has actually had him on the Atheist Republic yeah, just, podcast, so my, if I'm right, right. No, yeah, just search right. for How to Fight Islam. I had a very long conversation with him. That was pretty good. We should have him on the show. Yeah. We should have him on the show. Yeah. I agree. I like, think, I, I, think uh, yeah. Yeah, th- I actually like him quite a bit. Yeah, let's, um, let's reach out to him as well. Okay. Okay, um, um, sh- okay let's see. Oh, shit. I lost my place. Hold on. Let me catch up. Guys, give me a second. Um, okay, I'm back. Uh, two heads in one body. Okay, we're still going with that. I think they're <laughs> discussing that amongst yourselves. That's great. Yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> um, okay, KC's asking, do you think Majid Nawaz is still a believer? He's sensitive about it. He kind of freaked out when I said every time I hear him talk, he sounds like an atheist. Um do I think Majid Nawaz? I I don't I don't really know. I think he he does uh, align and agree with a lot of the people, uh, a lot of ex-Muslims. He's generally very very supportive, but unless he says it, yeah. I wouldn't know. I can't I can't uh, mind, yeah. I can't pretend to know what I mean. There are many people who I was convinced the way that they were speaking that they were uh, atheists, and then I had private one-on-one conversations with them, and then they told me why they were still believers. Hmm. Um, one of them actually said, and this is a fair point, if you heard our conversation with Abdullah Gondal, and later on we get into the biography of Muhammad, is that uh, after Muhammad died, he didn't name a successor, he didn't name any kind of inheritance thing, nothing, and the Quran was compiled uh, many, many decades after he died, so anybody could have written stuff, anybody could have put things in. It, so this person who I talked to, I'm not going to name, because she's actually fairly prominent, uh, she said that she still believes because um, she thinks that the real Islam died with Muhammad and she's going to go with whatever she thinks of Muhammad. Um, and so, so there are many different reasons why I don't, I don't agree is, with it, but yeah, of course. I'm like, not, so how do you know any less? So you just make up your own religion. and come yeah, so, so you don't, you don't know what he was about either, but, but uh, she would be like uh, the, cause you know, she's like, well, his hey, first we don't marriage, know, so let's just make stuff up. His reverence for his daughter, you know, the way he cared about. And, and then I know? think. How do you, how does she know? That, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, all of that documentation was through the Isnads as well. You know, the, the right. sort of people who, who transmitted tradition by the, the oral, tra- what they call the oral tradition, mm. which was the, uh, the Arab uh, method of documentation back uh, between the, between the uh, 7th and the 9th centuries when there's for, a vacuum for, of For all we know, history. Muhammad might have been an atheist. Right. Yeah, he could have been. That would have been great. Maybe he never said anything about Allah and all that stuff. Maybe no, people maybe afterwards. Maybe he said it, but he was like, he told Ali, like, "Hey, let's. I have a plan. Let's make some. This. This. This is. Yeah, I don't That's know. the thing. Yeah. We don't know. So they've this. This person has basically started from her identity as a Muslim. She right. thinks of it but as going, an identity. But let's go to back. And that's it. But going back to the question regarding Majid again, we we only can tell by what people tell us, right? So if they say they're an atheist, okay. I mean, no. As long as the definition is no no actually we can't go by what they say if they say they believe in god then we'll be considered them not an atheist okay Mm -hmm. but if they say i believe in god but i'm an atheist i'm like no you got your definitions wrong so i don't accept if they say they believe in god i'll accept that they believe in god because i can't read minds but but if he is but if somebody is an atheist and they're choosing not to say that they're an atheist and it might be, and I don't agree with this, but their personal reasoning might be that they might think that whatever they're move, whatever they're leading, will be very will not be as effective if people knew that mm-hmm. know that you're an atheist, right? Like well, actually, you, a lot, in a lot of cases, it's also security reasons. So a lot of people won't say. I mean, no, I, but I don't think. I mean, how many times do you hear this? People like not many, but in general, they say like, "Well, as a Muslim, you know, oh, are mm-hmm. you saying that to a Muslim?" Or like, well, I'm a Muslim. You're talking to a Muslim. And like, how many statements like that do you hear them start saying? Well, all of that is going to go out the window as soon as you're not a Muslim anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. Right. I know. So, uh, but either way, yeah, I, uh, the Majid is someone who I think is, um, like, he, I think he's got a lot of integrity. I think that he has, uh, whenever he says, if he and ever again, decides. They, but, but wait. And, and remember, Majid was in that, that first debate. He was debating across from Ayan Hershey Now he's debating on the same side as her. So uh, there is a learning curve as well. And some of these things are, you know, they're transitions. He may get there. He may not get there. I don't know. Right. But, but, uh, but either way, he's an ally. 
But here's the thing. If somebody is an athe- atheist, but they're choosing not to say that, some people might say that, see that as deceptive. I, I, I personally don't know if it is. Maybe they think it's worth it for, you know, I don't know. Maybe they're thinking that, you know, the term Muslim is just a loose term anyways. So maybe in their own mind, they're not, they don't think that. I don't think it's a good strategy, honestly. If you're, if it's not, if it's not for safety, if it's for safety issues, definitely be whatever you say, whatever you have to say, right? But if it's not for safety issues, if you don't believe in God, I, I really encourage anybody and everybody to just come out as an atheist. And I'm not saying somebody that doesn't do that is being trying to be deceptive. I just think that it's not the best strategy to not to not. I mean, the more people openly say they're atheists, the, the more I mean, atheists are one of the most discriminated groups in the world. We need to normalize it. I mean, uh, if you if you think like, oh, I need to stay be a Muslim because I need to. Uh, normalize being a Muslim and people not discriminating against Muslims. Well, well, what about if you're an atheist? Well, you're abandoning us. Like we need normalization here as well, buddy. But go on. Okay. Ali. <laughs> um, Alex, we're going to say all these questions because I know a lot of people skip over these questions, but these are the f- most fun ones. Would you rather sleep with 100 or ugly girls or one gorgeous girl? Armin. Uh, w- I mean, even if it was between 100 gorgeous girls and one one gorgeous girl, I would have to go with one because 100 gorgeous girls. Like, what the? How would you? How would that? Ugly, happen? ugly. 100. Ugly no, but girls. I mean, even if both was gorgeous, like, how would you go about having sex with 100 gorgeous girls? That sounds well, that's like between you and me, <laughs> sir. No, no. I mean, no, no, at, I'm, least, I'm at least at least five or ten, maybe. That makes logical sense. You could do something. I just I can't even imagine how are you gonna like what the hell hundred. That sounds like a gang rape or so. I don't know. I don't know what that is. I, just, I, just, I don't know. Like, can uh, you ima- can you even imagine hundred? Like hundred? Okay, five, ten, maybe even twenty. Okay, I don't know, but hundred. Like that sounds like a nightmare. All right, but go ahead. I am betting that Alex, Alex, I hope you're very, very satisfied with that answer. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so let's keep going. More questions, uh, more questions. Uh, Serena is saying, who is slash are your favorite authors and why? You want to go for it first? Oh, me? Favorite favorite author? Author Author or authors? Favorite. uh, Well, I have to say, Masi Halinajad is one of my favorite authors now. But after I read her book. uh, Yeah, you you loved her book, right? Oh, my God. Yeah, one of the best. Um, I love Sam Harris. I read a lot of his books. Um, I re- uh, oh, Breaking the Spell. I think it's a very Daniel Dennett. Uh, Daniel Dennett is a very underrated, like more pe- like underrated book. More people should read that book. That's so that's such a good book. Oh, um, from I like I like Dawkins, but not because of God Delusion, mostly because of the Selfish Gene. That was my favorite book of his. Um, I like unweaving the rainbow and some. I think he's a wonderful writer, right. Richard Doc. I would say him, and I'd, I'd also say, uh, I, I would say, out of all these, if we're talking about the the sort of the new atheist writers, I'd have to say Christopher Hitchens is probably. I, I'm not of, because I, mean, I, I like I like I like Hitchens uh, talks. I don't like his book. The the only reason is because when I read the, one of the first, probably the first new atheist book I ever read, or it wasn't new atheist book back then, but it was. Letter to a Young Contrarian by um, Christopher Hitchens. And reading him, even reading Hitch 22 and some of his other books, the way that he wrote, he writes like music. It's like listening to music. I mean, the, the way that he uses words is like a musician playing notes. It's it's absolutely like there, there's an there's a, an emotional allure to it. So I, like I would Steven definitely Pinker admire this well. group. Stephen Pinker mm-hmm. as well, and all, but but and one book that I have, one author that I haven't read yet, but I have watched lectures of. I'm looking. I have a list. My list of books are way too big. So um, that, that like what I've seen in his lectures, I know I'm gonna love his books. So Bart Ehrman is going to be very interesting. Um, Valley Nash, is that how you say him? Valley Nash. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's him. Yeah, Valley Nasser's a really, uh, he didn't coin it. Um, Huntington, Samuel Hunt- Huntington, is no, that his name? No, no, that's, I think that's a, that's the person that named the book. He wrote the book, but he didn't coin the term. Some, oh, no. wait, hold on. Um, okay, guys, we're all Googling now. Okay, wait, wait, wait. 
No, I forgot what he was at. The guy that writes no, about Islam. The guy that writes really about Islam. That. The Jewish guy that writes about Islam a lot. I don't know. Hmm. He Moses? Just... <laughs> what? What did he say? Anyway, so what about uh, fiction? I got to say one, one of the books I read a uh, long time ago, which still stands out, it still stuck with me, was even though I don't agree with her politics a whole lot nowadays, Arundhati Roy. She wrote The God of Small Things. Uh, it's just a mind-blowing book. It's it just amazing when it comes to fiction. Anyway, there's so many, I, I can't even oh, think of them. But, oh, um, oh, Bernard Lewis. Jesus Christ. Bernard Lewis. Yes, okay. I, I read a lot of him. He's awesome. I'm not good with okay. names, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and uh, I also have to mention Tom Holland. I'm rereading uh, In the Shadow of the Sword. He's just a, he's a historian, uh, and he's just a... Uh, just again, just a beautiful writer. Like reading, he he makes history sound like a like a thriller. It's it's great. So I recommend that book too. Um, Shruti Suresh, Faith Goldie is a Nazi. So I've heard. I don't know enough about her, but uh, from what I've seen, like I, I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't, nowadays it's gradations, right? Are you really a Nazi? Are you just a white nationalist? Are you white? I have no idea. But yeah, I. I it's not something I'm interested in. You guys should talk to Vidu Vids and Mimsy. So Mimsy, I need to know more about who Mimsy is. I haven't, I haven't heard of Mimsy, but have you? Have you heard of Mimsy? Wait, Mim- is that is that from the Mimsy? M I M Z Y. Who's that? No, is that you from know? the cartoon? Is that? I don't know, but Vidu Vids. By the way, guys, again, another heads up. Vidu Vids is going to be on the podcast. Um, I have Ooh, talked to him, yeah. Walid Wayne. So I have talked to him. We're just scheduling uh, right now, and uh, I'm going to go on his uh, his thing too. So we're also figuring that out. Um, oh, can we have? So the I'll mask? let you know whenever we that happens. We should have the masked Arab on as well. The masked Arab. Yeah, yeah, we should. So, um, <laughs> Matt is saying, Ali, we just elected Doug Ford. Don't rule anything out. I think we talked about this in the past. I'm not going to get into it too much. Oh, but the Ontario is election. wife. People, uh, Facebook chat is saying. By the way, I have some questions from oh, Facebook chat as well. Okay. Okay. Cool. So yeah, we'll do that. So so yeah. V, uh, so uh, as far as the Doug Ford things, I, I I know we elected him. I think a lot of that really really had to do with the complete failure of the Liberals. And I vote Liberal. I'm a member of the Liberal Party. Uh, I I still align with a lot of their values, but I think they completely screwed it up. And Kathleen Wynne screwed it up. And that's a, a big reason why we have Doug Ford because people just weren't able to save. They they were spending way too much anyway. That's local politics. I'm not going to get into it too much. Um, okay, so uh, Mars is saying Ali Arman, Iona Italia on Twitter. Oh, I love her. And it often references uh, Hindu nationalism. How severe are their practices as opposed to Islam as a different religion? I'm curious as to what effects it has on the areas. We're going to be actually doing an episode on this. So there are a couple of guests that I've reached out to. And um, uh, I, I know one of them, again, we're just scheduling, Zubin Madan. He's a, he's a writer uh, who, who lives in India. Um, and he, he's pretty familiar with this, uh, the politics over there regarding Hindu nationalism. He's also an atheist. Right, so uh, of a Barsi background or Zoroastrian background, so so he's going to be really interesting to have on and to talk about this. He's a journalist over there, so yeah, he's one of them. Uh, there are other couple of a uh, couple of other people that we're planning to have on. Uh, Iona has a um, a great new podcast called Tea for Two that she does with Helen Clark Rose, who I really like a lot uh, as well. And uh, we're currently scheduling i'm i'm going to be going on that podcast and i'm we're probably going to invite them on here as well so we're going to have more dialogue so look out for that mars thank you that should get us a lot of fans from india i think yeah what, you know they're in you know, atheists in india and in philippines have and in mexico have been doing a lot and in kenya there's mm-hmm. so a lot of activism all around the world that uh, we need to acknowledge Nigeria as well. As well. But and we should we should reach out to an atheist in Nigeria. I think that's going to be a major battleground. But go on. Yeah. And uh, now Kant is asking asking again. Do you think David? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do? Uh, do you think David Horowitz is a bigot? Um, I don't know who. Da- do you know who David Horowitz is? I'm bad with names. Okay, let me look it up. Okay, Armin will look it up. And then, uh, meanwhile, I'll do on the next question. Um, there's some it, stuff between commenters. Oh, I've seen this uh, guy's face. Raptor10001 okay, is asking, 
Uh, can you speak to the history of Islam and where to start studying it and what fascinating things to look for? Um, ooh, where to start studying with like a, like a oh, short I have type book, of thing. I have books. Okay, so... Okay, do, you do your recommendation and I'll do mine. Books? Uh, you want books or um, lectures? Well, what I like what I like is reading it in a, st a story format. So there is, I think you have to cut it into uh, three different sections, and these three are not at all the same length, right? So, but they're as significant, right? So you have to when you talk about history of Islam, you're either talking about the history of uh, Muhammad's life, um, and then you're or, or or you're talking about what happened after, which is um, the four the four Khalifas and then right uh, Hassan and Hussein and Imam Ali and whatever ha during that time. Oh, so the, the dynasty is like Umayya dynasty. Yeah, no, 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 no. That, that's the third. That comes part. later. The third. Right? Yeah, that's the third. So, part, yeah. so basically, the uh, Muhammad's life, the Rashidun part, which is the Khalifas, and then Sorry, the Caliphs, the yeah, Khalifas yeah, part. And once the Khalifas, the four Khalifas, the, once they're over, then you have the Umayya dynasty, then you have the Abbasid dynasty, and then do you have the Ottoman. Uh, well. Yeah, uh, on my, uh, um, sorry, Ottoman dynasty, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. then after that, there's no more, the, 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 yeah, World War One. Um, but so you, you are to talk, so which ones are you mostly interested in, right? I think you could, they're completely separate topics, to be honest, right? The interesting thing is that Muhammad's life is what Muslims see as what made Islam Islam, which is interesting because the more you study it, you realize what happened after is mostly <laughs> responsible for what made Islam Islam. So, uh, you could study Muhammad's life just to, because for, at, at least in the eyes of Muslims, that's the most important part. And that's what the most important part of the, the foundation and what the nature of Islam and what Islam stands for. And Muhammad himself, whatever he said and did represents Islam. Uh, but then, I think what happened after Muhammad is becomes very interesting, becomes very political. It's kind of Game of Thrones, okay? It's what happened after Muhammad's death, the 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 family disputes, the backstabbings, the drama between all the elements that happened after Muhammad is so, so, so interesting. It is exactly like Game of Thrones without the dragons, which is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. so, and, and I can give you some book recommendations on, on that. But then after that, this is an area that I'm actually interested in seeing more books about, uh, books specifically dedicated to the three, uh, to, uh, the th like right now I read books on Islamic history and it's just like Islamic history, one book. Like I like to see a book uh, sp specifically um, on Omayyad dynasty, one is specifically on the Abbasid dynasty and one specifically on the Ottoman. There are books like that there, but I, I, I mean, it's, I've read some of them, but not, you know, the, the ones that are about for the rush doing this stuff has just been written in a much more interesting way. Anyways, but if you guys have, I could give you the book I read about. Uh, the, yeah, the rush doing are the people from before, the the ones yeah. who. But yeah, go, you go ahead while I look at the books that I um, read. This. Yeah, I would say like there there are a lot of uh, really interesting takes. So the, mo most of these have been, well, many of them have been sort of uh, German scholars. If you want to get into the uh, the actual. The really the real nitty gritty of it, uh, I, I Patricia Crone and um, uh, Michael Cook had a book called Hagarism, uh, which was about you know this idea of the uh, the, the Abraham's uh, slave girl. So Sarah was barren and Sarah couldn't have kids. So you know until Isaac happened, uh, he actually ended up sleeping with one of his concubines. His name was Hagar, and she had a son called Ishmael. And the Ishmaelites are now uh, thought to be Arabs, and so there, there was this theory. And you know, later it got complicated after that too, but um, they they kind of went from there and they looked at a lot of the the history of Islam um, that was documented by uh, sort of non-Muslim people who who non-Muslim historians who who weren't writing about the life of Muhammad in really flowery language, I guess, because a lot of it was a lot of the historical accounts had accounts of angels and apparitions appearing so clearly that wasn't real um so they they went with uh, other sources and they tried to put together some of it a lot of it they've retracted themselves they the authors themselves so they they felt like they got a little too ambitious with it um but it was a pretty interesting thesis as well so i i thought that, that was um the factual stuff in that book was really interesting uh, uh tom holland and again i just mentioned in the shadow of the sword 
uh, he is he has uh, actually compiled a lot of this academic sort of looking back into history in, in one place, including their writings. You don't, um, you want to you want to start with the story with ones rather than the academic ones. No, no, but I'm talking. I no, but I'm talking about the story yeah. told academically. So you have the story of the Battle of Badr, where there were angels who came in and they said to strike the disbelievers. You've got those kinds of historical stories, but then you've got the historical stories that talk about you know who who first encountered Muhammad outside of Arabia. You know mm-hmm. what was he. Was he ever in Syria? Was he ever in Jerusalem? Like those other things, uh, the biographies that have been put together that way, the, the actual historical accounts. So, and and a lot of it is very opaque. A lot of it we don't know about. Um, yeah. So so there there are many. Uh, there's a guy named Fred Donner. I think he's at the University of Chicago. I, I'm probably getting the place wrong, but um, he's got some interesting takes on that early period of Islam as well. Can I give the so, names of the books that I read? Uh, that, yeah, like, go for it. So I read some some was a Muhammad stories. Some of them were very pro Muhammad. Some of them were very anti Muhammad. I think one of the ones that seemed less biased than the other ones is Muhammad from Martin Links. His life based on the earliest sources. That was very fun and very interesting. There are so many books on Muhammad. I think that was one of the least biased ones. Um, mm-hmm. And the one that uh, I, I liked, um, which was uh, after it was right after Muhammad's death, about all the drama that happened after. It's very very fun book to read. Uh, after it's called After the Prophet. Uh, after After the Prophet, the epic story of Shi- the Shia Sunni split in Islam. And mm-hmm. that one. Oh, who's that? Who the author for Leslie that is? Hazelton? Leslie Hazelton. Leslie Hazelton. Leslie Hazelton. Yeah. Hazelton. Yeah. That yeah. one was so fun. Oh my god. There was some de- like I knew most of the stuff, but the way she, uh, but there were some de- juicy details that I left out from school, uh, mm. and also the way she's even the parts that I know the way it's written is so much fun to read. Yeah, I, I'd also I can't believe I'm recommending this because I'm not a huge fan of the author. But No God But God by Reza Aslan, uh, the first fourth or the first third of it uh, is actually really good. There's a couple of things in there that are sort of wrong and a little fantastical, but um, uh, but overall it it uh, I read that one it too. provides. Which one was it? What is it is the feature of Islam? No, 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 no God But God, the oh, Reza no. Aslan. Book. Yeah, yeah, the No But God But God, and then it says and the here the subtitle is. Yeah. yeah. No God, but God. God. So I, yeah, I would actually recommend that to a lot of people if they want to kind of read it, if they can, even yeah, though, it, you know, definitely it, not a fan of the author. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. It's so. called, no, it's, I was right. So I read this No God, but God, The Origins, Evolution, and Future of Islam. So that's the full title. So the, the, yeah. the interesting thing when I read that book is that he actually, from the very beginning, says that, you know, who says these stories have to be true? And I was like, what the fuck? And like, Reza, you're not no, a Muslim. But yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. He got a lot of crap from Muslims for it. And, uh, it's, right. It, it, yeah, but this is before all the, yeah, I don't, I don't no, know but what te- I think if he believes that, technic- technically, he's not a Muslim. If he thinks these yeah. stories are not true. Well, I mean, recently he's actually come out as a sort of an agnostic, God-only kind of non-religious kind of person. He has talked about his new book, you know, it's called God or whatever. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's about that. So he started talking about it more openly. Okay. Um, anyway, so uh, guys, uh, let's see. Uh, next question. Uh, David Horowitz, we talked about that. Books. Uh, Steven Pinker talks about how alarmist messages often don't work. Yeah, he's correct. And I, I agree with that. I have a Facebook question from Asif. Yeah, go for awesome. it. Do you think that Majid is fundamentally trying to change the definition of Muslim to make it more like a cultural thing rather than religious, so that Muslims are then more like most Jewish people, I cultural Jewish? We have a full episode on this, don't we? Like we could. Um, yeah, we we actually talked to Ibrahim Abdullah from Muslimish about it. Ibrahim's a oh, yeah. really, really good friend of mine. He's actually okay. one of my heroes. So, so as uh, if, he, uh, as if, I mean, and actually we had a huge disagreement on this, right? So yeah, we did. If, Go look for, uh, search for Ibrahim Abdullah and Secular Jihadist, and that should show up. Yeah, so you'll get a, a more detailed yeah, We talked thing. about oh. this in great detail. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, do you believe the Kurds are in any way more tolerant than other Muslim sects? I, I actually, I, I don't know enough about that in terms of how tolerant think, they are. I think I know that they're they prosecuted. I mean, you get prosecuted by four four different countries. Pers- persecuted. Yeah, I mean, you have to become secular because I mean, whenever you're a minority, you become 
you have no choice but to be pro secular, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, um, I think, yeah, but I think the fact that they're pro secular is be- mostly because of their history rather than they're because of their being courts. Um, and, you know, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, think about it. They're, why would you be not supporting secularism? It would, and after so many years of wanting freedom, wanting um, fighting against prosecution against your people, it kind of built, it got it built into their co- identity of uh, being a court for for many people, not for all courts, obviously. Uh-huh. But I'm just saying this is because of the histor- the history that they went through. Like courts, you remember, courts don't have a country. They wanted to have a country. Um, but after the world war, they all, everybody got a country, but the cars got left out and they got split in between four countries, um, uh, the, uh, the, between Iran, Iraq, uh, Turkey and Syria. And all these four countries gave them shit. So obviously, like if you're a Muslim, for example, in a Christian country, you're going to be pro secularism. Uh, if you're a Christian in an Islamic country, you're going to be pro secularism, right? Um, but if you're a Muslim authority in Islamic country, then you're not going to be pro secularism. Um, mm-hmm. so Kurds have always been, um, discriminated against. So naturally they will become pro secularism and we support secularism. So I guess we have a lot uh, to align with. I just don't know if it would be different. It probably would be different if they were, if they had the Kurdish country. Uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, go on, Ali. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think of street epistemology? Have you tried it when engaging with Muslims? We we had an episode where we talked about was it with Matt Dillahunty or Yeah, I mean there's there's some there's some great great things about it, but there is a weakness to it as well. And I and I know some people are not gonna like it that I say this, but the thing is that you know the diff- the the problem is that if you don't add your own m- message, it's a very effective way to get people think about their thinking yeah to to think about whether they're what they believe is true or not right uh it's just not a very good way to spread uh you know nobody like for let's say you you want to get them you want to get more people out there if you don't have something to say for yourself you're not going to get far you know you, that person is going to go home and maybe just going to think about their belief but they, they, but you yourself are not going to be somebody that is standing for something where people will recognize you that this is a person that is doing this and standing for this and has this message and that's why we f- will go to his platform to see what he has to say or what she has to say and if you don't do that then it's going to you're going to have to do one person at a time you're not going to be able to get a huge audience of people to to speak to Right. Uh-huh. So the, the, the only weakness of, of it is that it's most like, it's good that you, li- it's, it's great that you're listening and asking questions rather than just saying anything yourself. But I think you, I, I like to do that half and, and mix it a little bit with suggesting things, uh, adding your own, you know, uh, ideas to it. Like I think street, uh, uh, epistemology kind of looks down upon maybe if you could correct me if i'm wrong looks down upon you suggesting anything or making any claims yourself but i think that's important like you could have that's an important element when it comes to talk i mean i have had uh, more luck with making claims as well and suggesting things as well but maybe i'm not understanding it. i mean i've read the book um and is is very interesting and there's so many useful to uh, tips and tools to use from it i just don't think it's as enough but go on yeah yeah okay so uh, shruti's uh, shruti's saying i'm not comfortable with the person standing for office she hopes she loses. oh you're talking about faith goldie i agree with you i mean she's uh and she's kind of useless and she will lose bigly <laughs> as you said and the toronto mayoral election i mean we've got our current mayor john tory who's probably going to get reelected. Uh, people are generally happy with him and his contender main contender is jennifer kiesmat who is uh she is an urban planner um and uh, she also has a really good record and i would be fine with either of them um but uh yeah faith goldie is like way way down the list toronto is not the kind of city i mean that <laughs> i mean i know they elected rob ford uh the but uh, Faith Goldie is a whole different animal uh, compared to Rob Ford. Anyway, compared to even even compared to Rob Ford. Uh, okay, so uh, there's a little bit of discussion going on. Um, let me go down and see if there's. Any if you want to make sure your questions get asked, make sure you tag secular jihadists so that or tag yeah. Ali 
anything. Yeah. yeah. And I'm seeing, I think I'm catching most of them. Yeah. Uh, in a, any way we can make a call in show for Muslims like atheist experience. We've had this question. I, I would like to do that. I don't know how. I, 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 I think voicemails would be better than call in so that we could control for quality. So what I can do is go on Secular Jihadists. And you know how on Atheist Republic, we, I put a green button there where you could go click and you could record your voice, right? Mm-hmm. So I think what if we do the similar thing on Secular Jihadists and then people, Muslims could basically ask their questions or make a claim and just we just play the audio and just respond to it. We yeah. do something like I that. Think- yeah, I think in addition, I think that would be a different thing. It's kind of similar to what we do now where patrons and, and other people, the public generally gets to participate. Yeah. But I think there would be a place at some point, it would be kind of fun to at least try out a an atheist experience-like thing. I've seen Maja do it on his LBC show, yeah. and it actually is pretty, uh, that, that having that live back and forth exchange yeah. is actually pretty interesting. So um, maybe at some point in the future, yeah, we can think about it. Yeah. So... Okay, it's, so it's, it's, it's live stream, live call in is more complicated than voicemails, and I think voicemails would be more productive because first of all, you don't know how many people are going to call in. We're just going to be waiting around and wait. But if we have like ten voicemails to play back to back, at least we know we have something to work with, right? But right, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, his first name Islam is asking, do you guys follow what Rajiv Malhotra is doing with Swadeshi Muslims in India? I unfortunately don't no, let know, us know, but about again, it. yeah, but again, uh, when we do our episode on all things India and the situation over there, then then hopefully we'll be able to cover that and we'll make a note of it. Um, okay, some comments again. I'm trying to get questions. Oh, okay, one comment from Jim. How about a shout out to old secular jihadist Yasmin for getting over one million views for in solidarity videos. With the woman who are forced to wear the job, we love Yaz. Go check it out. Her video, go to her Twitter timelines is Confessions XMU, yeah. um, and uh, check out her video. I think it's her pinned tweet, and yeah, it's gotten. Uh, it's a fantastic video okay. um, where great. she takes off her job. Yeah, in, in solidarity with women who are forced to wear it. Um, That's great. Uh, okay, then there's some discussion about Majid again. What do you predict of Trump's plan for peace for Israel Palestine? It what? looks a lot. I don't think he has any plans. Uh, he has a plan to make himself look like he is <laughs> for something or another. Uh, it looks a lot less than past offers and based upon paying off Palestinian leaders. Um, my I understand my, my view, and this might be totally wrong, is that it's not like Trump gets up and comes up with a plan in the morning or like goes and says, like, hey, I have a plan. It's like just people come and say, like, hey, this is a plan. Let's go with this. And he just like thinks about it for five seconds and says yes, no to things uh, based on how it sounds at the time. Um, I, I don't think like this is a planning kind of person. I don't know. I mean, I think. Yeah, he, he likes to rally to his own base. Um, so. Uh, you know, one of the right th- there has been there there are a lot of politicians on in both parties, Republican and Democrat, who, for example, wanted to make Jerusalem the capital of, uh, declare that Jerusalem was the capital of of Israel. Um, but the the idea was that the U.S. Republicans and Democrats, every administration, the Bush administration, Johnson, everybody since Lyndon Johnson, has wanted Israel to curb the settlement expansion. Um, and uh, one of the reasons they didn't give that Jerusalem capital to uh, Israel is because they wanted to get something in return. That's how you negotiate. Um, unfortunately, he didn't do that. He could have actually negotiated and he could have gotten something out of it, but but he didn't do it. No, no, and it really, it's not a big move anyway, because no, is, it, Jerusalem was always a de facto capital of Israel anyway. No, you're right. Very you're right that thing. the main thing that he thinks about is that how things play with, to his base. But I just, my image of him, like... I mean, this could be completely wrong, but I just don't yeah. think that he moves into a room and like says, I have a proposal. I think he moves into a room and he depends on who has his ear, right? People is going to be like, this, we should do this and this is going to work well with your base. And he'd be like, oh, I like that if it works well with my base. And he's just going to take those proposals. I don't just, yeah. I just don't imagine him going into a meeting and be like, here's my plan. I think he goes into a room and somebody says like, here's a good plan. You should do this. And he's like, okay, I think that's good. I actually agree. With that. And the people that he surrounds himself with who are telling him that stuff are people who kiss his ass all the time. Because anybody right. who doesn't, he, he is eventually fires them or they leave. So, um, right. I mean, there's a reason apparently there, there, there are a lot of, so there's a lot of speculation that reason John Kelly, his chief of staff, is still in there, 
and some of these other sort of reasonable people are still in there is because they're saying, hey, listen, if we're not there, imagine who's going to replace us, right? So that, that's an issue. And that's why a lot of people aren't resigning. So yeah, I don't think Trump is serious about anything. He's just that. Anyway, especially when you've seen what happened with the John McCain thing. Everything that's happening recently. I, it's just so petty and so stupid. Yeah. Anyway. Um, okay, so uh, Tina is saying, I've watched a lot of YouTube channels on Islam. Is it dangerous to leave Islam? I think it's called apostate and why. Um, yeah, Tina, that's exactly what our podcast is about. And I would uh, I'd love for you to go and check out uh, some of our pe- previous episodes. Yeah. Um, on leaving Islam. The punishment for leaving Islam is as agreed to by the vast majority of scholars in all sects, well, the main Shia and Sunni sect at least, is that uh, you should be put to death. Mm. So that, that and is, even even the ones that are nicer, they say like, well, you need you should be put to death, but because we don't have an Islamic state right now, maybe we should wait until we have an Islamic state. So that's the yeah. nicer version that you're gonna get. Yeah. So if you ask people who are like imams in the U.S. or imams in Britain, well, do you think they should be put to death? If you really push them, they'll say, uh, well, but that would only happen in an ideal Islamic state. But in the U.S. and the U.K., no, that doesn't apply. And that's our way of right. responding to it. So it is, yeah. It's, or they it's bring a, up trees. And it were, they bring up treason as a United States. Oh, like oh, in the United States, also treason was punishable. Like they, uh, what about them? Two wrong doesn't make all that. He's actually you should go watch the. Okay, so t- that was Tina. Uh, we mm-hmm. had an episode with Hagigaju, right? Da- Daniel so, Hagigaju. Daniel, yeah. Daniel Hagigaju. So just search for Daniel. Sec- How do you? Is it just search secular jihad as Daniel, and you'll find it. Is it? Um, yeah. And you can listen to that, and we covered all of that in detail. And and I'd actually, uh, I'd, if you listen to our third episode ever with Rana Ahmed, I mean, she's a she's a woman who was able to escape Saudi Arabia. Uh, she also left Islam uh, from Saudi Arabia, and she came here, and uh, she's been completely separated from all of her family because even her brothers were searching her out to try and kill her. Yeah. Uh, so this is a serious thing. Um, just to, just, to be, clear, just to be clear, uh, Tina, da- we were t- arguing with Daniel, and Daniel was basically a person that I um, was arguing why it's okay to kill ex-Muslims if uh, people who leave Islam. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, so let's uh, keep going. Uh, Samuel Huntington, yes, they mentioned it, but then you said Bernard Lewis, and someone said that too, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think it was, who was it that said that? Islam something. Islam Zionism. That's a very long username. If you want, if you want to shout us, you have to have shorter usernames. But go on. Mm-hmm. Any B just saying any thoughts on Canada ending birthright citizenship? Is Canada ending birthright citizenship? I don't know. Is it? Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. And if there is something like that, it's probably a really fringe type thing. I know. We better. Some t- we better have a baby fast. <laughs> yeah, I know. What are we going to do with all our anchor babies? I, I think that uh, if oh, you're wait, born in a country, if you're, that's your country. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so wait. I'm a Canadian. My wife is not Canadian yet. Uh, am I am I going to be affected by this if I have a baby? No, because I'm Canadian, right? So it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah okay, good. Yeah, so there is a uh, apparently a, a motion from something, some sort of conservatives... I don't even know who it is. Vote to end policy that allows birth tourism. Birthright. Yeah, I don't know. So it's a, it's a big industry here. Like there's like um there's like a lot of services dedicated to it. Like people I think it's I don't know who use takes advantage of it mostly. Is it the Chinese? Yeah. yeah. I I don't know. I, I think it's yeah, Chinese I mean they're there I mean, is that idea that, you know, when you want to have a kid, you come to Canada, have the kid, then go back to China or go back to whatever country you're in. They're talking about birth tourism. Right. Um, and they want to, uh, and that the Conservative Party is calling for an end of birthright citizenship. So, you know, you're right. I didn't Zara, know about Zara this. is asking if I'm a baby, and I know, but maybe I should before this law is passed. But no, I'm a Kenyan, so it shouldn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when uh, the so-called birth tourism was when pregnant non-Canadian women fly to Canada in order to give birth and secure citizenship for their babies, that happens. I, I'm not a fan of, uh, I think that if you're born in a country, that's uh, your if that's your place of birth, then that's your place of birth. It's like that in, in the US, it's like that here as well. So uh, in any case. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't, maybe it's, 
what do we think about people taking advantage of like just coming in? There's going to be people that are doing that, but it's not a very common thing. I think people hyping it up a lot more. Mm-hmm. Uh, that it's maybe not instead of taking it common. away, they have to say like you also have to live here for a year after your birth, something like that. That's the kind of thing that they're saying. But even then, I mean, how many people like are coming over here, paying privately for healthcare to have a kid and all that stuff? If you're being able to pay, if you're paying privately for for uh, to have a kid over here, it pr- probably means you have a lot of money to invest anyway. You'd have to be pretty wealthy. So please right. welcome. Hmm. Hopefully that improves our economy. Anyway, so yeah, that's my I view. Guess. Sang is asking, "What are your day jobs?" So my day job. You're being is, uh, uh, You're discriminating against people that can't afford. Anyways, go. <laughs> Yeah, no. I guess so. I'm always going to be discriminating at somebody. Uh, day jobs. Armin, what is your day job? I have six. <laughs> um, I work, I don't know. I mean, you're talking about day jobs, not hand jobs. <laughs> All right. I don't care how many bodies are attached to how many heads. It doesn't um, make a difference. Okay. I work at Penguin Philosophy. Um, yep. that's Armin's my, a media director, right? Yeah, and the media, media director. director at Penguin Philosophy. But I, honestly, everything I do it takes is uh, it's not okay. So I work at Atheist. I mean, I I still work at uh, Atheist Republic, Penguin Philosophy, Secular Jihadist. I mean, what's the definition of a day job? Because I do all of these during the day. Um, so I also, I mean, the other ones are less uh, of a uh, more part time. But so I guess the other ones don't apply. But uh, but Atheist Republic, Secular Jihadist, and my work at Penguin Philosophy take the most time. Oh, I also do like a short term rental uh, management for with but with my my wife. She takes care of it mostly. We have a team for that as well. So property management for people that uh, do short term rentals. Mm -hmm. And. Me, I, uh, I am a, I'm an oncologic pathologist. So I was a cancer trained as a cancer pathologist. I practiced medicine until 2011. And then now I work full time in medical communications. So I work at a digital, uh, uh, healthcare agency. That's my day job. That's a lot of fun. Um, so Z- Zahra wants to name, it wants me to name our child Zahra. Well, hey, why not? It's a prophet. It's, nice, it's, it's nice the name, name of the prophet's daughter. It is. Yeah. yeah. Or middle name or last but, name. Or but I might, I, I don't know. I, I'm always in favor of adopting instead of actually having a baby, but my wife wants to have a baby. So I don't know. I don't have a Have son. a baby. Have a baby. Yeah, you guys. I'll be good. Yeah. I'm Let's actually very much, uh, I don't get it. I don't understand. Why not just adopt? We could have that argument if you if the live chat asks. Uh, I, I, I really I, don't I, understand. I, but go honestly, on. if my, my daughter was adopted, I'd uh, it wouldn't have made a difference at all. Exactly. Because I, because people have asked me, like, you know, what if you find out it's not your real kid? Just because she doesn't really look like me a whole lot, her, her eyes and stuff don't look like mine. So people are always like, uh, what if you find out she's not your real kid? I'm like, well, at this point, I don't give a fuck whose kid she is. Like, I'm absolutely in love with her. So even if she was totally adopted, it wouldn't make a, it would make fuck all difference to me. So yeah, I think yeah, I either mean, way I is fine. I, don't, I, uh, pe- I mean, I really don't see. There's nothing magical about my sperm. I don't understand why that makes a difference, right? I, and like, it's like, I've, as long as if it's a, what, I mean, this is a chemical reaction. You can love any any baby as long as you're involved in raising it, right? You are so cerebral. That's, <laughs> it's, it's a, but that's, that's, that's the advantage too. That's a good thing about you in a lot of ways. But I don't know. There's, yeah. It's, it's not, it's not it's a like, totally it's cerebral a, decision. Yeah, it's a chemical reaction, as if like you one chemical reaction you're valuing it more than other just because it didn't came from your DNA. What's so what's so significant about that? I don't understand. But anyways, go on. I will leave that between you and your wife to discuss. <laughs> I haven't been. Not, <laughs> that would be good, yeah. I have not been very successful at that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're even less successful. Okay. Yeah, it'd be fun to see you have a kid. Um, why not invite uh, Iona Italia on the podcast, Killian? Actually, okay. First of all, Killian. Everybody should know I'm going to be on Killian's podcast on September 12th. Um, so uh, I will keep you guys up to date on that. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, as far as Iona, Iona Italia, I've told you I'm, I'm a massive fan of her. Um, and I, uh, she is. Uh, we are going to reach out to her to come on the podcast. Um, I still have to reach out to her, but I will. And I am going to be going on, on her podcast on uh, T, T for Two as well. So just repeating that for you guys. Um, 
da, da, da. So uh, George Kordahi, my good friend George Kordahi, uh, who's a fantastic guy, uh, Horowitz was in his previous life an extreme left winger associated with Ramparts magazine. At a point, he went extreme right. I, I, I don't really know him, so I'm going to have to read up about him before I can comment or say anything, but that would be interesting. George would probably talk about it next time we meet up for coffee or whatever, uh, which we should do long overdue. Um, so, okay. Intorian is asking, is there a major difference in day-to-day practice of religion between Shiites and Sunnis? Would one thing practiced daily in Sunni be considered horrible in Shia? Right. Major yeah. difference. How much is time there, do you have? <laughs> no, but do you think there's a major difference? Yeah, I mean, okay, so it depends on the Shia and Sunni side. There are a lot of Shias and Sunnis that are desperately trying to make it seem like they're both the same religion. And there are a lot of Shias and Sunnis that are very focused on making it very clear that the other one is a heretic, right? So the, the, Sunni, the Sunnis are heretics, by the way. They're assholes. <laughs> yeah. He has a All right. Here's the thing, though. When it comes, I'm, yeah. You, you, actually, you're right, kind of. <laughs> 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 well, actually, you're right, and you're okay. So when it comes to theology, I kind of see the Sunni's point because the Sunni's always say that the most important thing, the most fundamental part of Islam, is what Tawheed. Right? There's nothing more important than Tawheed in Islam, which is the f- oneness of God, right? But that's, that is the, that is the main pillar. That's the first pillar of Shia Islam too. Tawheed, Adul Nabuwa, Imam Yeah, yeah, Qayyam, no, right? but Shias are just talk, talk, talk because they pray to Ali, they pray to Hussein, they kiss the shrines of the, of the Imams, and the Sunnis are like, what the fuck are they, you doing? They don't right? actually pray to them, they call out to them. No, we, they, but they, no, okay. but they I don't pray know what, to, when they come to worshiping. Yeah. No, no, they pray, actually pray to them. They say, Ya Ali, please do this to me, for me. Ya Hussein. They, yeah, they yeah. ask them for things, but it's not considered a... The prayer is no, no, still there's to God. Two, okay, in, in English, you have they one they pray to for, God through... Okay. They pray to God through Ali and through Hussein. Okay, in, in, in Islam, there's two different words for prayer. You have the namaz or salat, and the other one is the dua, okay? But all of these things in English are called prayer. Right, but in in Islam they're completely separate. The prayer that you do five times a day is to God and God alone, right? Or three times. She has cheat. She has basically combined them together, and they actually praying three times a day, but they count five. Yeah, is, but they say that that's what the Quran said. The Quran yeah, yeah. doesn't specify five times. Yeah, like okay, they but, they are but, actually yeah. Okay, I'm but, not but, but, Shias, but there's by a, the, way. the other prayer which is the du'a, do that. which is yeah. the other prayer which is the du'a. Uh-huh. She has do pray. To imams, they do, okay? Yeah. And to imam Zaman as well. It's kind of like how the Protestants are pissed off by some Catholics when they when they pray to the saints, right? And they're like, why are you praying to de- why are you praying to dead people? Jesus is the only God, right? I mean Actually, you know what? I'm gonna concede. Yeah, they do. They what they do is they they ask the imams for protection, they put on that imam, yeah, imam zamana and everything. Yeah, they they ask the imams for protection, and so they, they do pray to them. Right. The, the idea, uh, the underlining idea is that the imams, because they have direct divinity from God, they have direct That's, connection it, to see, God. See, just saying, that just the fact that they're saying the imams are divine goes against Tawheed. For that's Sunni. why they're, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's but, right. So th- when it comes to the theology, it seems like the Sunnis are more, I mean, in line with the concept of Tawheed. And remember, the greatest sin in Islam is shirk, which is having partners in divinity to God, right? Yeah. Which the Sunnis were like, hey, look, every Shia is basically doing the greatest sin in Islam. That's right? true. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but when it comes to, so theology, Sunnis, I think, are closer to Islam. But when it comes to the stories, it seems like the Shias are, have the upper hand there. Because if you read the stories, you read the book that I just told you after the prophet, you cannot feel bad. You cannot, you will feel bad for Ali. Or I think, I think based on the stories, I mean, okay, Ali did a lot of shit that it seems bad, but it seems uh, like not, he's not talking about me, guys. He's talking about, uh, yeah, the, um, Imam other, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you look at Muhammad's story, if you look at the stories, what happened, it seems like they, the Shias are right. 
to me, it seemed like this, this based on the stories, Muhammad wanted Ali to become the successor. And it seemed like they cheated uh, the Khalifa uh, uh, from right away from him. It seems like he got backstabbed and uh, eventually literally backstabbed. Um, and, and his sons were mistreated. All the Imams and Shia Islam were completely like uh, prosecuted, poisoned, killed. Um, it just seems like, I mean, I'm not defending them because they were kind of like yeah, Imam Hussein himself. He just led a whole bunch of uh, army of 70 people with women and children in a, in a suicide mission, which is fucking uh, stupid because you killed, you're responsible for the kids dying now, right? But, but see, that's the thing. I, I never thought of that as a sacrifice. I always tell people, I'm like, Armin, if I, if someone told me, he's like, you're going to go to heaven for eternity if you just let all your family die in this today. Right. No, but you're saying, but what about the babies? He put he Imam Hussein picked up a baby in front of the Aziz army, and then arrow hit the baby. Right? They're the saying that the, part of that tradition is that he was shown Jannah, he was shown heaven, that this is where you're going to be tomorrow, including your Ooh. baby. Okay. So, yeah. No, no, I mean, of course he wasn't, but the thing is that was his delusion, I right? Know, so that's, that's part what of he the thought. No, no, no. Okay. Now, no, what I'm saying, that, this that, is what that, I think. That Taliban logic that you had interviewed, that doesn't work. They, they're getting Islam wrong, okay? Because if you kill a baby, okay? Yes. Well, I'm not defending it. I'm just no, saying no, no. that if I you mean, believe. No, I know, you, I know you're not defending it, but even in Islamic theology, it doesn't make sense. Because if you kill it, we say like, hey, if I kill a baby, the baby's going to go to heaven. So I did the baby a favor. Yeah, the baby's going to go to heaven, but you're going to go to hell. <laughs> like, you no, no, murder but he's an saying. He's he's divine, so he's not going to go to hell. <laughs> no, that, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Here, here, look, the two things, two things. First of all, Jesus' crucifixion, like he did sacrifice for all of humanity, bullshit. First of all, he was resurrected from the dead. Ooh. Second thing is, if you no. if you believe that there is a life after death and this life is meaningless, then death is not death. Yes, but death in is Islam, just, in Islam, it's a really can painful make- transition to a better place. And if that is your sacrifice, that's not a sacrifice. If I'm like, I understand that, Ali, not- but you can make that in Islam, you can make that decision for yourself, but you can't make that decision for someone else. Even yeah, in no, no, Islam. No. Unless, unless you have been told by God to make that decision for everybody. See, okay, you said told by God. So that's not only now you're saying Hussein was divine, that's saying he's a prophet. I'm going by the belief. I know. I know. See, I'm it's going the a lot of, this is a th- another thing. A lot of Shia thinks that a lot of Shias actually claim that Ali was spoken to by God himself, which puts, puts him in the same, which, which so, some Sunnis are like pull their hair out when they hear that because Muhammad was supposed to be the last prophet. God speaking to you is the definition of a prophet to them, right? So if yeah, some yeah, Shia yeah. say actually God even spoke to Ali. That's, people, yeah, that's yeah, like, yeah, I, I get some, that. We're, we're talking some, on two different planes. Here's another thing. I'm saying, it, another I'm thing. saying it. There's some wait, wait, fringe, wait, No, this is actually very interesting. There's some very fringe Shias that even say that Ali is the essence of God. Like they like the, the, the Nusaris or Nusran. You know, uh, yeah, they're it's fucking, yeah, they the Nusaris and right. uh, the uh, yeah. Oh, I don't Sh- want Shupi, some, Shupi is leaving. Bye, Shupi. It was great having you. Bye, Shupi. Yeah, yeah, thank you for for your comments, and I appreciate the comments about Faith Goldie. I completely agree with you. Right. Okay, so anyway, um, they, let's move on from the Shia Sunni conflict. Right, Hopefully, right. we'll so, we're gonna st- we're gonna solve that. Not this podcast, not next, but the podcast after that. We'll have that whole conflict solved. I okay. promise. <laughs> I promise on Allah, by Allah. I swear by Allah. Right, yeah, right. That's all. Okay, so uh, uh, Killian, I, I don't know if you have heard of Stephanie Tessier. She works for XMNA and has a heartbreaking story. She's very articulate. She was also on the Lala Dagach podcast. Have her on. Um, I have, yes, I have heard of Stephanie. I think she did one of those videos, didn't she? Who? Stephanie, I, I'd have to look at, I, I'd have to oh. confirm, but I think she did one of those. The, the XMNA has this great series of videos um, that show the, just the, the personal you know, stories. We should of many have Muhammad say it on at some point. Yeah, I actually talked to him about that in New York, so we're going to, I'm going to reach out to him too. Okay. Um, uh, so, yeah, and and yeah, I, w- I would love to reach out to her, Killian, so yeah, send me more information. You got my email, so just send me some information. And I'll I'll reach out to her. Um, more about this Horowitz guy. Okay, saying test here, test here. Hold on, hold on. There. Okay, so again, Islam Zionist, regressive left, alt right, and geopolitics is rag. We're just gonna call you is rag now. Um, are you guys familiar with Ken Wilber's solution to the current culture war we're having between? Pre-modernism, pre-modernism, modernism, and post-modernism. If not, I recommend checking him out. Um, 
I'm not familiar with it. Armin's, I think, Armin, you're writing this down. Ken Wilber? No, are you no, Googling I, it? No, somebody in the Facebook chat said hi. I'm just saying hi back. I want to oh, make sure. Okay. So, I just want to make sure so if Facebook uh, people know yeah. that we're looking at the era as well. Yeah, the current culture war. Yeah, I don't know. Like whenever I hear about this, uh, a lot of these, a lot of these buzzwords: pre-modernism, modernism, postmodernism. It's. Uh, I I I have. I guess I'm suffering from a sort of exhaustion. Hey, uh, from, here's here's a, a postmodernism. Just means like your facts don't matter, and uh, definitions could be anything that you want. Yeah, like like what like for example, like Jordan Peterson, what he talks about a lot of it is like very postmodernistic. But, even though he he rails yeah. against it, I know, I know, yeah. But yeah, he's okay. but a lot of the you know the truth isn't really truth. Facts aren't really reality. The right, right. You know, you go from order and chaos. Anti, and, uh, anti, I see it as anti logic. Uh, it's it, yeah. it's actually classically postmodernist. If you look at a lot of his writings, very, very no, no. I'm just saying postmodernism is basically an anti logic. Uh, kind yeah, of. Uh, Andrew Sullivan, um, when he had the Dish blog a uh, long time ago. And I still wish he'd bring it back somehow. He had a thing called Poser Alert, like P O S E U R Poser Alert, and he would he would find like sort of postmodern type writings, and uh, he would quote them, and they they were hilarious. So actually, if we go to Google and just search Andrew Sullivan Dish Poser Alert, you know, a whole bunch of them will show up. And there's uh, people writing really eloquently about things like Big Macs and shit like that, like very very seriously. So it's it's a lot of fun to to see. But yeah, I've, I'm kind of exhausted with a lot of these buzzwords, and I feel like a lot of it is just that we talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. And the more right, you talk about it, the more next, next question because we're, we're like, we're like I am right now. Yeah, yeah. Armin's like, don't talk about talking about things. Oh anymore. my god! All right, let's go. Go next. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lots of uh, <laughs> not a lot of Raza fans here. Mm-hmm. Raza Al-Sat fans. Good. So yeah, I thought I knew it would be risky recommending his book. Uh, Killian saying, did you ever watch Reza's show? It was embarrassingly bad. Yeah, I actually was, <laughs> I posted when he went and met that sort of like fringe Hindu group and he ate the cooked brains of a human being. So he engaged in cannibalism right there on the CNN show. That's Haram. That's very anti-Islamic, yeah. by the way. So even though I thought it was, uh, I, I, there were parts of the show that were interesting. But most of it was like really bad. I agree with you, uh, but he got that show got canceled because he said something negative on, about Trump on Twitter, and CNN canceled his show. So before Roseanne, before any of these people, like Reza was the guy who got his show canceled. And I completely disagree with that. I don't think it should have been canceled as bad as it was. I think that was insane. By the way, Asif on the Facebook chat is saying uh, if we we're going to have Salman Rushdie or Ibn Warak on the show, and also well, Wahid is asking if we ever going to have a Baha'i in the show. Um, so the Baha'i, we got a question about that. I did make a note of it. Um, so it's going to be on, I, we have a lot of stuff lined up uh, yeah. very soon. So but let's go, uh, it'll he, let's, be a let's while just then. answer a little faster because we need to end this one. And there's so many okay, okay. The, the other people that you mentioned, uh, you mentioned Ibn Warak. I hung out with Ibn Warak in New York. Uh, he's been a hero of mine since I was very young. I read his book, uh, why I'm not a Muslim in the, I think the late nineties or something. Uh, no, just so, say yes, yes or no. Yes, are we going to have them on? I will reach out to him. Yes, okay, okay. Let's, and let's also, also Salman Rushdie. Mm-hmm. Let's reach out to him as well. Uh, well yeah, reach out to him. He's. Uh, I don't know how available he is, though. Right, 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 but right. we'll reach out to him. Okay. Um, yeah. Again, quick heads up. We have Sam Harris on the podcast. We have Sam Harris on the show September twenty sixth at at at, at uh, eleven a.m. Pacific time, which is two p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So make sure you tune in for that. Um, more about the Hindu thing. Okay, let's keep going. We have like what, Armin? You got another twenty minutes? Or something? Yeah, let's twenty. Let's try to get all the questions in twenty minutes. All no more. Don't s- send any more questions so we can finish this. Just let's go through all the remaining questions very fast. Uh, what do you think about Petra being the real birthplace of Islam? Claim. So this is actually coming from uh, I think the Tom Holland I mentioned. Tom Holland. These guys. Um, I don't know. I think that there's some evidence for it, but I am skeptical. I mean, that's one of the depends things. Depends on what you I mean by birthplace, because you could, if farther back you go, you know, I mean, the, the, well, whole the con- idea is that Mecca, it wasn't Mecca at all. It was, it was, oh uh, my God, that's an extreme claim. Okay. Extraordinary so, claim. Yeah. Extraordinary. No, no, no. But actually this is kind of, you'll find this interesting that the reason that they really painted Mecca retrospectively, like the Caliphs and all these other, whoever it was came afterwards, the Isnads, they painted Mecca as a birthplace when they rewrote the history is because that would give them an excuse to make it seem like a miracle. Like how did Muhammad know about the Jewish and the that's, Christians? It's, right? it's, it's, it seems like a conspiracy 
Me- yeah, like because need- Mecca was in I the don't... middle of the desert, right? So how would he have we been have, able? To- don't we have like the Byzantines and the Persians actually have mentioning the war, like the them, like we have a lot of yeah, yeah. I think we have historical letters showing that there, there was uh, these Arabs came from like uh, the the Arabian deserts attacked yep, them. They were like- all they were all historians who were located in Syria, Israel, uh, like that area right now. Right. So that's I the mean, thing. I mean, there was like the Persians and the Byzantines were using proxy people within this area against each other. Like, don't we have all these records? I mean, I, I'm not saying it's not. I just said like everything I heard before from actual secular historians seems to be against all of this. But I don't know. Um, I haven't looked into the evidence. It's just so. Like, so it's, even even the people who originally wrote about that were Patricia Crone and Michael Cook. They have kind of retracted it. At least I don't know if they retracted that part of the claim. But yes, it is a possibility. It's interesting to look into. But it's, I, it's, but it's extraordinary. Like you need to have like okay. But it would be amazing if it's true. It seems like a very bizarre. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, but that, that is a really interesting question. Okay. Um, I mean, you have a behind your podcast, so we already covered that. Uh, Armin, where did you get the new background? It looks great. Armin, do you want to talk about where you got the new background? No. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, it's actually, guys, it's the same background as the old one. But you know, do you it's remember a different the dress? place. It's going to be the same. I mean, I, when I'm at home. It's going to be the old background. I just uh, this is uh, this is no 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 I mean, no no. This no. Is you're, a, you're, yeah, you guys just seeing it differently. Remember the dress, the golden and white versus uh, black and red. That's what's happening. So people, depending on your on your whatever the way the lights hitting your retinas. Right. This is so just a different location. It's a different location. Yeah. Undisclosed. Yeah. Uh, um, you should have Mustaf al Islam on. I know that guy, I like him. Yeah, we might, we could do that too. Okay, culture war, more about that. We covered it. Dan Gibson, it would be nice to have him on the show. Dan Gibson, I know Dan Gibson is uh, okay, just to keep a note of it. Let's go to the next question. Let's keep it right. In. I think I, if he's the Atlantic writer, the guy who wrote that thing about the 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 secular rescue thing, then it, if if I'm mem- memory serving the correctly, then yeah, sure, I, I think it'd be cool. How hard was it to get Sam to come on your podcast? Does he have a lot of free time? Uh, answer. <laughs> well, first of all, it was, uh, I wrote to him. He said, yes, uh, he, I've known Sam for a very long time yeah. since like at least 2013. So it was, it's not, it wasn't him. hard, but it was, I mean, it's Ali. So Ali is, uh, Sam knows Ali, but he was, yeah, yeah, so he, been, yeah. But yeah, he's yeah, very so generous. He was very generous. He just, he was very generous with his time. Like Steven Pinker was too. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of free time. No. Uh, no, but uh, which is why it's happening at the end of September. But of course, I mean that that kind of is a case for a lot of us right now. Obviously, we're doing a lot of things, which is a good thing. It's okay. a good thing. Oh, okay. Um, shit, 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 shit. Okay, yeah. Just uh, ask clown. Okay, I'm reading these comments aloud now, which I probably shouldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was curious when I go to watch a or oh, there's a penguin philosophy video. I see an insane amount of dislikes. Oh, oh, because okay. people want con- free content, and it, it's very expensive to make these events. So, you oh, are to- they pissed because you haven't put out the Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris thing? That's why they're pissed. Yeah, they just don't know how complicated it is and what goes behind it, and they they they're 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 wondering why they have to pay for it, but they don't know how expensive it is to make these events and how much the speaker fees are and how much the venue fees are, and if we don't if they don't charge for it. You're not going to be able to continue making events like this. So they're, yeah, that's they a, just they just feel entitled to free. Like you go ahead and you make all these, you put so much time and energy and money and funds into making these events, and they feel like they're entitled to give to have to to it for free, which is weird. Yeah, yeah, I I gotta say this. So this so guys, the, 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 and this generally goes for podcasts in general. I mean, this is obviously it takes. Out, we love what we do, and honestly, we were doing this for free at one point. We would, but the, but we can do it better. We can get better guests on. You've seen that through the evolution in this podcast you know right. we've had amazing and all of this stuff it really happens because uh, you know the, the, you've got to put in a, there's resources that take it that, that it takes to make it happen with Pangburn you've seen those events and you've seen the kind of chairs that they have they look like they're sitting on thrones you know you've seen the no, kind the, of the chair, that it's bought. not the chairs that the chairs were just part of the venue I I'm think talking what, about from a PR perspective like in terms right. of people who are looking at it no. like it's very every detail has been thought uh, like really really well thought and those are amazing events and and the thing is you know, it's it's very easy to kind of look at it and say, hey, you know, everything on YouTube's free. You know, why can't I get this free? And so I, I get that. I I would think that at least for a certain amount of time, you know, they they, they do have a right to kind of try and 
right. at least uh, get I some mean, of their... Here's the thing. There is a reason why there's nobody else doing these events like in this scale, because nobody has figured out how to make it financially feasible, right? You have to, Because these are very expensive, right? And the interesting thing is that all of these events are going to be released for free at some point. Right. That's the idea. The, yeah. the thing is that they just have to have the, the they, they just want it now. And they're, they're, they don't understand that just being, having the patience. If, the, if you don't want to pay for it, if you're patient of patient and let people that want it now pay for it, that's the difference between just having two events and going bankrupt rather than having 10 or 12 events or 20 events or unlimited events because now because of your patience we will give you your free content eventually but because you're waiting that is a, it's, it's worth the cost to have more events because now we we have a model that makes this financially possible to continue right so yeah yeah getting so, it I mean, late uh, means that you're gonna have more of it isn't that a good right, deal right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, and so you have the organization, the event, even the video editing and all of that, getting the sound, getting everything right. I mean, it's a very, very big thing. Okay. So, and, and by the way, some of the speakers that you guys get, like they, they are, they're not free speakers. <laughs> <laughs> like they're expensive. Ooh, you gotta, yeah. I have that's no it also another thing. Okay. Anyway, so let's keep right. going. Um, Arn is asking, uh, Sam Harris, Pinker et al. have come under lots of criticism for not calling out right wingers and not calling out sexual harassment by prominent atheists. What do you think about this? Um, I, I actually think that. Uh, Wait, I, Sam I think, Harris was warning us about right wingers before right wingers became a thing. Again, yeah, he did. I, he I was, think he was like, been, he, he was, he was in his book or reading his book. He was like, "Hey, people, if we don't speak about these things, this is going to become the rise of the right, like right wing nut jobs." I'm warning you, and he was uh, like, "People are like, oh, so you're saying they're right." And him like, no, I'm not saying they're right. I'm just saying you don't give them the monopoly over speaking about these things. This is going to be, a, and this was before Trump era. This was before all of this. So he was he actually talking wrote about it in 2006. Yeah, yeah, he would. Ta- he was talking about it before anyone else was talking about it. And he has, even though he has a lot of fans and stuff. I mean, there, there, there. A lot of these guys, and uh, you know, me included. Believe it or not, even now. Right now, I have a lot of like really far right wing people because they're like, "Oh, he criticizes Islam, so I'm going to follow him." It's come down a little bit, thankfully, but it still happens a lot. So all of us well, get well, that. I mean, it's not but- thankfully. I mean, I'm I'm hoping that I have right wing followers because I want them to like. I mean, Muslims are right wing followers. No, no, well. I, okay. So, I, yeah, I, I, want, I agree with I want, that. We can change people's opinions. We shouldn't just yeah, no, no, dismiss no, no, people as right. Alt- I mean, yeah, right, yeah, by know. the way, we have to. We, no, we no let, say, me, let me clarify. Let, let, let's clarify something else. We shouldn't say right wing. We should say like far right because not right wing doesn't mean bad. Like right wing shouldn't be used as an insult. Right wing, left wing. We have rational people on all sides. I think what people mean when they write, people are using right wing and alt right interchangeably or right wing and far right interchangeably. Changeably. Not all right wing is far right. Not all right wing is alt right. Mm-hmm. But go on. Yeah. I think the, the the only problem is like the mainstream uh, right wing right now. The mainstream because they're in power and they're right. uh, you know at everything like that. A lot of people interchangeably use it. Let me clarify. I didn't say that I don't I don't want those followers. I said thankfully a lot of them are seeing that that's not what I'm about. Right. right. So, so they've they've learned that I'm not I'm not aligned with that kind of stuff. But in any case, and uh, also so, not all left wing is. Far left, not all left wing is also, you know, social justice warrior. Yeah, but hashtag not all. Hashtag not all. Yeah. So, so yeah, the, I think that uh, Sam has been consistent. Uh, unlike a lot of other people, like you know, I, I know Dave Rubin. A lot of his Patreon followers are tend to be Trump supporters. So even though he wants to talk about criticizing everything and calling out bad ideas, he will never, very rarely criticize Trump, if at all. Uh, Sam Harris is the exact opposite. I think Pinker is the exact opposite as well. I think a lot of times they just want to don't want to engage in the very, very sort of fringe things. A, a lot of the names that I hear, hey, why don't you talk about this person, that person? I haven't really heard of them. I'm pretty sure Sam hasn't heard of them either. So yeah. um, as far calling I mean, whatever, out sexual... Even if you address so many things, there's going to be stuff that's going to be left out. Mm-hmm. You, know? you can't just be like, oh, go ahead. Yeah. As far as calling out sexual harassment by prominent atheists, <laughs> uh, Sam, no, Sam actually, no, but, would get- I, you know, how, how come you haven't called out sexual harassment? Okay, well, like really? Okay, I'm going to call out murder as well now, rape. Okay, <laughs> I condemn rape, murder, uh, putting houses on fire, kicking babies. I condemn that as no, no, well. But, there, but there's also another thing. Uh, no, I think that what uh, uh, what he or she is talking about is oh. sexual harassment by prominent atheists. I think they're talking about the Lawrence Krauss issue. The Lawrence Krauss oh, event okay. that was happening with Sam, he 
actually ended up, Lawrence ended up not doing it. The other thing is Jerry Coyne actually very publicly came out on his blog against Lawrence Krauss and said, I'm dissociating with him. And Sam backed that up. He retweeted it and he hasn't been associated. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, the, so there's I a, think I was, I was, so he has called, called out sexual harassment. But, but even, even though if they have called it out, I think it's okay for them to call it out because I think they know stuff that I, we don't know. I just hope mm-hmm. that people are not calling stuff out without actually knowing what actually has happened because I don't feel com, I don't feel, um, comfortable calling that out. I mean, mm-hmm. I think Sam might have been in a different position that he knows things that maybe we don't. That he makes them feel like, okay, I'm going to call this out, right? But I think for people like us, calling something out like that is irresponsible. Yeah. Because we There's don't There's certain know. things that I kind of know too. There's a couple okay, of things. Okay, so, so you can... Those you, places so I've called you, it out, but yeah. other th- things, I yeah, I, I would want to know more. Right. Um, so Zahra uh, is asking, why do you feel the live and let live doesn't work for you? Huh? Mm. Actually, we're all about live and let live. Let, no, let, wait. Let and let live? No, no, wait. Okay. So let it, when people say let and let live, they usually mean something else. They usually, let live. No, they usually mean like don't question people's opinions. We're like, how is how is me questioning your opinions is stopping you from living? Right? Yeah, that, that's a, that's part of my living, like questioning opinions. I'm not right. telling you not to have your opinions. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not banning your opinions. Right. I want to. I've repeatedly said I do want Islamists and I want jihadists coming up and speaking in universities alongside Richard Spencer and all these other guys too. I want to have this dialogue. I want it out in the open. Let's have it. Let's, let's have but, it out. Like, like people ask me care. this, like, why can't you just let people believe what they want? And like, when did I force them not to like, what, like, did I, first of all, it's impossible to force somebody not to believe in something, even if you could force them to say they don't believe it, but you can't really force anybody to not, but like, uh, you know, people are going to believe People are a slave to their uh, ideas. Like you can't, you can't force them to not be Muslim if they still think there's a God and a law. There's, but when when do we go out and put like guns, you know, on people's heads and say like denounce Islam? Like no, we we're just putting out content where we are. If people are noticing our content, it's because they're coming to us. We're not going to them. We're not forcing our content on them. Let it, let yeah, them yeah. let them believe. Like when did I? When did we? When did we force people not to believe what they want? It, exactly. It's an invitation to consider things. Okay. It's yeah. an invitation. You can just say no to the invitation. If, I mean, this is. And, and the thing is, they, they all talk about bizar- it all the time. So yeah, we're talking about I it. I mean, too. it's bizarre that about- it's coming from Muslims and Christians because it's whole like that was part of Islam or like evangelizing uh, is part of, yeah, is evangelizing. Part of Christianity. <laughs> and we're not against a lot of people like, oh, you're now like Muslims or Christians because now you're evangelizing atheists. We're, that's not the part of atheist Islam or Christianity we're against. Islam should be able to invite people to Islam. Christians should be able to invite people to Christianity, right? We, mm-hmm. we, we, we just put all the ideas in the free market, uh, marketplace of ideas and let's see which one of them wins. And if you don't like it, don't listen. You know, Salman Rushdie one time said, that if you're offended by a book or if you don't like a book, just don't fucking read it. Uh, okay. If somebody is coming and shoving our books and like putting it in your face or coming to your m- mosque and sh- shouting at there is no God, then we're okay. Then we'll, then you have a point. We'll, we'll call that out. Like don't force your content on other people. Okay. Right? Yeah. But go on. Yeah. We got that. And uh, now have you watched the sacred city by Dan Gibson where he explains his Petra claim? No, but I would love to watch that. I'll check it out. Mm. Um, I think because it sounds so out of this world and interesting and crazy, more people are going to believe it because it's just people love this kind of stuff, right? Okay. Uh, So more sort of uh, follow up from, I think there's, yeah, there's another conversation going on here. So guys, I'm going to take just, I think two or three more questions. um, And then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, which of Ibn Warak's uh, books do you recommend? I've read Why I'm Not a Muslim. Which should I read next? I am. Um, I, I actually am sorry. I've, that's the one that I've read. I've read Why I'm Not a Muslim. And I read it a long time ago. Let's bring him on. He, and he a, could tell us. Yeah, yeah, he can tell us more. Uh, I think he has a book called Leaving Islam. Um, he also has a book called Virgins. What Virgins? Uh, so he's he's got a whole bunch of other things. He's written several books, but. Uh, yeah, why I'm not a Muslim is is his sort of seminal work that is that is historic. Um, I actually use when I was and just a really quick point when I was writing my book, um, a lot of the arguments that he used and why I am not a Muslim were arguments that have been countered by many of the, for example, the Ahmadiyya Muslim apologists 
And I have engaged with him and argued with him a lot over the last few years. So I tried to preempt those counter arguments when I wrote my book. So I tried to go a little bit further than that. So I, way, I think that if you read both of them, that would be kind of interesting. If you read way, his Z book after that. Z book. Zahra in the live chat, I met her in, in Sydney. Uh, she has actually like a very, she's an activist and she has a cool story. So we, we might want to bring her on the podcast at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, she's saying not not attacking individuals, but like, let's say uh, the Allah is a gay one. I totally supported that, and I wasn't surprised if it offended individuals. <laughs> Guys, one one thing uh, you know, there's this issue that when we people say something provocative, there's an immediate reaction. They're like, oh my god, this is upsetting a lot of people. We need to back down. Never go by immediate reaction. There is absolutely nothing, no big change in history that ever happened that did not immediately offend loads of people. Mm -hmm. Suffrage, women's right to vote, offended a majority of people. Civil rights offended a majority of people. Gandhi was assassinated. Harvey Milk was assassinated. MLK Jr. was assassinated. Any kind of idea, good or bad, that has been transformative has always in the immediate short term generated a lot of opposition. So if you think that you're right, you got to stick to your gun and not go by immediate reaction. So, you know, even if people are upset by things or they're offended, it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't make a difference. It, it, what makes the difference is whether, you know, you believe what you're saying is true and you want to convince other people of it. So just be patient. Um, uh, then let's go on. Let's take, uh, two more questions. Uh, more about Sam and... All right. da, 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 da. Sorry, guys. I'm kind of skipping over some of these. Should tolerance be towards the other be a requirement? Yeah, this is about tolerating. Okay, what do you think about tolerating intolerance? Uh, many radicals are very intolerant against others. Do they deserve tolerance? Yeah, I think they deserve tolerance even if they're intolerant. Yeah, I think there's a difference between. Uh, so th when we talk about tolerance, we're not talking about conversational tolerance, right? We're not talking about um, people when people say certain things and they shouldn't be countered, and we should just accept everybody's ideas and beliefs. We should accept people's right to believe right. what they want. We, but we right should to not believe necessarily and right to express, but what? But the, not the, the beliefs themselves. We don't have to respect or tolerate the beliefs themselves if we don't think we they're worthy. We challenge the beliefs. This is pretty. This is pretty easy. Okay, you 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 tolerate them having the beliefs. You tolerate them expressing the beliefs. You don't tolerate, but you fight against it. You challenge those beliefs, uh, and you don't. And the things that you should not be tolerated is any action. Uh, that will basically remove other people's freedom or harm anybody, right? So it's pretty, oh. it's pretty straight. I don't know. I don't understand. We've been saying this so long. I don't know if it's all right. So let, forget, forget Muslims. Forget extremist Muslims. Just look at somebody from KKK, right? We accept their accept the fact that they can have these beliefs. Nobody can force them out of their beliefs. We accept the fact that they can go out and. Uh, promote their views. Nobody should stop them from promoting their views, but they sh their views should not go unchallenged, right? Uh -huh. Their views should not go unchallenged. We should go out and fight. Uh, if if their views are spreading, we need to go out and as um, you know. The thing is that if you, the worst you can do in fighting against an idea is victimize the people that believe those ideas, because that actually helps their cause. I mean, we've oh. been saying this for a very long time. It just seems like okay. you know, broken. Record. So I I think yeah, let's make this the. Last question. Uh, the um, maybe give them. Is there an okay, episode se second, for more detail yeah, this, for this question? Uh, do you have any yeah. episode recommendations for this? Um, for the tolerance. Yeah, uh, the tolerance one. Yeah, we've talked about it a lot. Oh man, this one on free speech I've, that we did with Obed Omer a long, long time ago. Yeah, yeah. What about the that one was with, kind of a, that's a good one? And that, what about the one with um, Asadullah? I think that was also, we talked about that. Yeah, as Asadullah, well. that was good Asad, too. Yeah. Asadullah, yeah. Secular, yeah, okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to do two more questions. Um, Theo Mackey is asking, what do you think of Ben Shapiro saying facts don't care about your feelings and going on and on about Judeo Christian values, <laughs> giving us democracy and abolition human rights? I, I agree with you. I mean, the guy goes around with a kippah on his head everywhere. And then he, uh, so I was talking about when when they you ask him about revelation, he's like, no, I think revelation is a way to go to get to the truth. That I I, I don't know. Uh, there are he he has a lot of uh, sort of non fact fact based views on uh, things like uh, homosexuality and all the stuff that are totally informed by his belief in revelation. I'm trying to um, I'm promoting the idea of having him do an event with Matt 
uh, and Penguin philosophies. Math I, well, I would love on, to do that. On God and religion. That would be amazing. By yeah, the way, so, yeah, love, Sophia. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, I, I don't know. He's a. I, I don't get that. There's also another thing he talked about uh, social justice, and he said that social justice doesn't really. Uh, it's an evil term because anytime you have, it just should just be just justice. And if you have to put social in front of it, that means that, uh, you know, you're you're trying to dilute the whole justice thing. I'm paraphrasing, but I, I was thinking the same thing applies to religious freedom, right? You could say, well, why need the religious freedom? Should be freedom. If you're putting a qualifier in front of it, you're trying to dilute the the, the whole idea of freedom. I, I, a lot of his stuff doesn't make sense to me. Anyway. Go All right. So no last and last comment, not question. Sophia is saying very excited for Sam Harris. I think she's talking about having Sam Harris on the show. So just the last reminder to everybody, don't miss that. Uh September twenty seventh, right? Yeah. Um, September twenty sixth. Armin, don't miss that. Oh, twenty sixth. Yeah. Armin's gonna show up a day later. He's like, hey, <laughs> what happened? happened? <laughs> I was going by the Islamic calendar. <laughs> That's let not me the, make sure. Let me not, make sure this work. is going. This is going to be the most important event. It's, it's on your. It's it's on your calendar, Armin. Don't worry. Oh, you'll you be good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Good. Good. So, All right. So, one last question that I think is good is, what do you think about Sufis? Most Sunnis in Turkey consider themselves Sufis. They're not that much different from Shias. That's kind of something we haven't oh, really gotten into a whole lot on this podcast. Yeah, so. actually, they're very different. Okay, so Sufis had different relationship with Sunnis and Shias throughout history, depending on the political climate at the time. They used there. There was a time that uh, they were mostly okay, and Shias actually there's okay. There are Sufis that are cl more closer to Sh Sunnis. Um, and there are Sufis that are closer to Shias as well, but they don't call themselves Sufis because for a very long time, Shias looked down upon Sufis as close to Sunni, as, as Sunni. So they call themselves like, uh, Erfan. They don't call it Sufism. So it's kind of basically Sufism, but with a different branding. But that's a very big topic. Sufism is a huge topic. It's basically the summarized version of it is mis mysticism, Islamic branch of mysticism. Right? It's like the Kabbalah of Islam. Yeah. Right. And mysticism in general is they all look very much like each other. They're all like just based on, I mean, it's hard to pin it down because it's supposed to be very vague and very like not based on logic. And it's a very dangerous ideology, you know, even though it doesn't kill people. I could, a lot of people kind of suggest it as a way, as a, as a reformed version of Islam because it doesn't, but it's actually, it's very dangerous. It's actually, is responsible for the end of uh, the Islamic Enlightenment movement. Ghazali used his Sufi ideology to be basically fight against logic, fight against uh, philosophy, f fight against naturalistic science, and that was very damaging. Uh, that, uh -huh. that took the yeah. Islamic world. Yeah, go on. No, no, my, my view is this: it's not as dangerous, but it is just as false so it's dangerous in the sense that it's false i would argue so, I, I would argue that it could be more dangerous but the, because yeah, well i mean I, yeah. because yeah because it's false right so i think that yeah. what happens in pakistan especially i've seen a lot of people who because read the it's Quran. false and it, it doesn't look as violent so you could get away with shit you know what i mean no, but, but you know what happens in pakistan a lot of a lot of young people read the quran and they're like oh okay i don't agree with this stuff uh sufism is like they're like okay i'm just a sufi because sufis kind of look at the quran as just this like well it's a hairy kind of thing they don't take it very seriously at all but anyway anyway okay um how are the families doing the families are doing great um dia khan do you want to bring her in i haven't seen her new movie but i saw her old movie about islam's non-believers and i thought that was amazing yes i would love to reach out to her so i'll, I'll consider that for sure uh and i think that that yes. is yep. good job we did well we that is it, it. we finished we all the the, almost all the questions i think yeah. Oh, uh, one last one. Are you guys active with XMNA? I know Armin's a member. I just had dinner with a whole a, a, a bunch of uh, Toronto XMNA people last night, yeah. and I had a I'm fantastic. A proud, I'm a time. proud active member. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I've done uh, one of their events. I was going to do the one in Toronto, but that that got canceled for yeah. obvious reasons. And then but, uh, with the university, like they pulled out of it. But then uh, we had yeah, I had dinner with the uh, with the Toronto right, chapter I, of XMA. I, I, Loved go, it. Go. it was right, a lot of fun. Bye, bye guys. Bye, see you, Mikey. Okay. Bye, Zahara is going to sleep. Thank you for staying up for this. Beach. Love having you in the live chat always. NCROC is saying thank you. Uh, a R N N N Mars trying always uh, Mars is always a delight to have here. Sank I said to Yamaki Islam Zionism and the whole that big username which is Rag. Yeah. Is, okay, that guy. He thank you. You're always fun to have here as well. Who else? Yeah. 
Am yeah. I make, oh, my. Everybody, oh, did you, guys, you guys all know who you are. There's loads of you, so I don't think Rexus, we can say your name. That'll take another Specialist, thing. generalist. All you guys are awesome. Thank you. Daniel Yerke. Yeah. Have yeah. Been, yeah. Secularjihadist.com. Go on there. If you yeah. like what you heard here and you're not a patron, you want to watch video versions of all the conversations that we've had with all of these people that we talked about, then yeah, go to patreon.com slash SJME or just go to secularjihadist.com. There's a link there. Uh, sign up. You'll get access to it for as little as a dollar. You don't even have to pay like crazy. And if not, if you don't want to do that, that's still perfectly cool go out to itunes you can get all the episodes all of the episodes over there you can listen to them for free um and th- those are audio only though and uh, we had more facebook activity in the live chat as well so thank you for uh, fiona and sophia and 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 also asif there so it's good. yeah all right all right all right guys bye see ya i'm gonna call it a night and see you soon the secular jihadists have been made possible thanks to the illuminati and the covert support of israel and the cia That's what we have been told, but we haven't received our checks yet. If you like what we do, please support us. Share the podcast with your friends. Write and tweet us with topic and guest suggestions. Or head over to secularjihadist.com and give a dollar or more for exclusive access to live video. Have your questions read and answered on the air and more. Till next time, may the flying spaghetti monster be with you.